happening everybody welcome back to tour life you got myself and yuli tonight yuli will be joining us here in a second uh but before we jump into tonight's podcast which it's a good one i have i have this feeling every once in a while there's been a couple of them where you sit down in the chair and you get buckled up and you're like tonight is going to be a good one that is what we have on our hands today a lot of awesome guests and a lot of stuff went down this past week so a lot of talk about before we get into all that Many disc golfers have tons of extra discs cluttering up our closets and cars. There are a few storage pro products on the market that are designed specifically for golf discs and that don't waste any space. And unfortunately, the ones that do exist are terribly expensive. Thankfully, there is Discbox. Discbox is the only low-cost disc golf storage product on the market. Discbox is a simple disc storage bin that holds up to 30 discs requires no tape or glue and is made from recycled material in the USA. Go to discboxdg.com and you will find quality discounts, wholesale op options, multiple colors, and most importantly, no order mini minimums. So you can order just a single box if you want. Discbox also makes a great players pack item. Visit discboxdg.com today and get your collection organized. Use code foundation for 15% off your order. You know what the cheat code is, Silas? These target, uh, right here, these target shoe things. Cheat code. You were messing around with that? Is your mic live? I probably should have asked that. Oh, you do have a mic live. All right. Yeah, now I do. Oh, and video. Let's and go. video, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, do, you, no. do you have do you have anything storage? Do you have enough, like, mm, the collection or anything I, like that? I need something. I, I have... I have quite a few discs, I would say, just from, I mean, just naturally accumulate, naturally just working at, you know, you know in disc golf, you mm -hmm. accumulate discs. Yes. So I have, I probably have a hundred, something like that. And That's decent. they are, they are stored terribly because all I have. That's not good. All I, they're <laughs> just stacked up. They're just oh. stacked up. So I, I need something to, better. Get, get this target thing. It's yeah. like, uh. Or get, I mean, if you want to get a disc box, that's fine. I think that's yeah, more for like uh long term, term yeah. stor storage, but this target thing is really good too. So uh, yeah, I'll have um, to check it out. Looks like we got Yuli in here. Yuli's here. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? I just, I, I was just telling Brody, uh, I set an emergency alarm. I took a nap, went off five minutes before the pod. So I was I was rushing around to get my stuff ready, but I feel great, man. Nice little nap yeah, out there here in you Nashville. Go. You need yeah. a nap for this episode. I was telling the people too, before you got on, like there's a couple times we've had episodes where, you know, Ken Climo, uh, Chris and Tatar, there's a handful of them where you sit down and you're like, Ooh, tonight's going to be a good episode. And I have that feeling about tonight. I think, I think we got four really good guests. We have Calvin coming on first, then Ezra, then Ben, and then AB will be the last one on. We're going to be talking to all of them about uh, what went down this past week because they were all part of the story, and it'll be interesting to kind of hear some of their, you know, because we don't really get that. That's the one thing we really do lack, Yuli, is a tournament ends, and then, like, unless the, you know, the player decides to make a post to kind of give some thoughts, which... Honestly, I don't think we really want, right? You want the person that just lost. You want the person that got so close and made a couple of mistakes. You want that person right when they get off. Hey, what happened? What's going on? And you, yeah, that's when you get the real moment. Yeah. You don't want this PC stuff that they had time to like talk yeah. about. And they're asking like, Hey, do you guys think this is good? Should I post this? Like, no, give us, give us the real stuff, you know? Um, so we've got all four of those guys coming on. Uh, we have a wild story of the week as well. No Edwin stats, but he's going to be loading up stats all episode. So if you guys are listening to this on Apple or Spotify after the fact, maybe, maybe jump in the YouTube and, and check out the live chat. Cause a, a lot of good stats will be being thrown out there. I'll try to pick and choose the ones that are, uh, that makes sense to be brought up real quick. And then uh, a couple other crazy things went down, Yuli, this past week that we'll jump into at some point. We're going to be talking about uh, standardized tee pads. Maple Hill went a little crazy. Gambling and disc golf. 
And then uh, an FPO player calls out Disc Golf Pro Tour. We're not the only ones. So, um, yeah, kind of, kind of some crazy stories. It, it sometimes seems like in disc golf, like some weeks are just dead, and there's like nothing yeah. to really talk about. And then there's weeks like where we have an incredible tournament, and then it's like, oh, on top of that, you also have all this other stuff going down. It's just kind of yeah, how it works, had, I guess. We had a lot of stuff. We had a lot of stuff go down this last week. Yeah, so you were there. I was not. Um, how how did it go down for you? How how was your week out there? It, my my week was like a typical Jonesboro week, man. It seemed like uh, went out practice, beautiful weather, calm conditions, just throwing perfect shots, and then they turned the fan on right before we teed off, <laughs> and uh, it was tough, man. It was tough to manage that course seemed like it was a headwind on every hole <laughs> and it was just like one of those up and down a hill in the headwind yeah managing all the all the wind and stuff and i struggled the first two rounds big time and then uh final round i was in like i think i was in 69th place nice was, yeah 69th <laughs> place i was and uh <laughs> and um I started off the second round in the worst conditions, like really good, really confident and was making a bunch of butts all over the place and ended up shooting like a seven under and coming back to get 35th. There so you go. big jump there. Nice. And, uh, yeah, that's how it basically ended. I, I, I could leave the course finally feeling okay about it and jumped up into the cash and, uh, got to watch the final, um, few holes on the, on the, phone you know at the hotel so yeah i watched the battle which was insane we'll get into it i won't try to like it was perfect timing too because like but... the, the masters kind of wrapped up because i was watching the yep. masters all week masters wrapped up and then i you know i i went on and i was like let me see where the scores are and i'm like oh god i gotta put this on i gotta watch this i gotta see yeah. what's going down so <laughs> i got i think i got to catch um they were on where were they? They were on the island hole, I believe, is where I tuned in. The lead lead card was Do on we, the. You were definitely the watching time? the Masters then, yeah, because yeah. I did the same thing. <laughs> I was watching the Masters. I turned it off, and then they were yeah. talking about how Ben had laid up a putt from like a circle's edge or forty feet or something, and then I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on here, and watched the rest of it. So it was good. Yeah, yeah. Got it, to watch the you, Eclipse. That was crazy. That the was Eclipse nuts. was nuts. That was, that was nuts. one of the craziest experiences. Yeah. Really cool. And that uh, might have been two weeks ago, Yuli, but that's okay. Well, that was my Jonesboro week, though. I came in on Monday. Oh, I guess technically I think, you were there for that. I think I think Monday's when it happened. So yeah, okay. okay. I think we did talk about it on on Tuesday, but quick, yeah, qu quickly though. But it was a yeah. cool moment for sure. Uh -huh. Um, I'm I'm currently down two pounds, so. This is my second week in going back to the gym. And Yuli, I got to tell you, I think I had low T levels, man. I think I was, I mean, I was still like doing stuff. Yeah. But like, I don't know, man. Like I'm, I'm like listening to music now and like kind of raging out. Like I wasn't doing that. Really? I wasn't getting hyped. I'm like getting hyped now. Um, so I think, I think maybe that was like the missing link for me is because I was still enjoying a lot of aspects to my life. I just yeah. didn't have like that killer mindset anymore. Yeah. And I, I think it was cause I was, I stopped lifting. I think, I think that's why it's a big, it can be a big part of it. I mean, Hey, having a good diet, working out. Yeah. What I've, what I found is, you know, one of the things that kind of helped me last year was when everybody started playing pickleball and I was getting a lot of cardio and doing mm -hmm. something that wasn't disc golf all day, every day. And I remember feeling, feeling a lot more happy with myself. Speaking about down two pounds, I got a fun one. Cuppy and me yeah. were having a one month battle who can lose the most poundage. Ooh. Are you going to go like uh, super serious to where like the last day you're going to throw on like the trash bags and start running around? Like I will, you're on the I will do that team? for sure to make sure that Get I all the water weight I will, out there. I will do that without a doubt. So it won't be real poundage for sure. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if he will do that. I don't yeah. know if he will do that. You know, that's funny. We've been going yeah. hey, that's good. I mean, 
they always say like um having like some like that accountability partner is like so crucial yeah. like going to the gym by yourself the, yeah at the beginning it's not hard but there's you're going to hit a point of where you're like eh, i don't really feel like going and that's where it's nice to have that person because the days that you don't feel like going the other person might feel like going they drag you and then you can drag them yeah. so that's kind of like me and kelsey do that we both kind of we're, go to the gym and work we're out playing for a hundred so bucks nice. so it's like the opposite like i'm gonna go to the gym and i'm gonna be like oh hey taco bell's right there i'll drop you oh, off yes 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 i'll, get, yes. <laughs> I'll just sneak over here <laughs> Try to get in. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, th- this past week was really good. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting really excited to go out and play. I will not be at music city open this week, but I'll be making my return on tour to champions cup, which will be, you know, the interesting tournament for me to decide to come back to, uh, cause it is the hardest course we probably play all year. And we're going to play it four times this year, four times this tournament instead of two. Um, mm-hmm. well, hopefully I get to play it four times. And, but I'm back to putting every day, which is great. And, um, yeah, just a lot of good things. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. We kind of mentioned a little bit, the masters obviously was this past weekend, which you guys know, I'm a huge golf fanatic. And, uh, that was really cool to watch always is Scotty Scheffler is Scotty Scheffler had like very similar traits to like what AB's kind of doing this year. Like Scotty's uh-huh. obviously have had has had it for an extended period, but it is interesting of where like he's only the only major he's won is he's won the Masters twice now, and so there is that question of where it's like, can he win another major? And I think that's going to be like AB is going to have an insane amount of pressure on him to win a major this year, right? Like the start that he has, that's going to be the next kind of thing is if he doesn't win Champions Cup. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, he's going to be, he's going to be in that, that rarefied air of, of multiple pro tour winners. And then, well, he is in that air now. And, and the next thing is is a major championship. You know, we, we talk about Calvin, same, Mm -hmm. same thing. He's been in that, you know, at that level for a long time now. And so, you know, that's like one of those things that everybody looks at major because that, that's all he's thinking about. You got to, oh. of course he wants to win every tournament, sure. but that's, that's on his mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, the, the, I think, go ahead. Yep. So I think we have a little delay. That's why we're, yeah, you know, um, it's, it's tour life. It is uh, again, you're <laughs> crystal clear in the, in the image that I'm seeing, but the image that's displaying is not good. So I don't, I don't know what's going on again, but continue on. I can, I can yeah, hear you. Okay. Same, same on mine. Okay. Uh, no, I was going to say, I think one of the best things for AB was that big time loss at the European mm. open. Um, honestly, because right after that, we saw him play really good at the world championships. He wasn't really going to ever win the world championships, but having a good finish right after that kind of put him in a good place, I think. And then he had to sit on those losses for a long time over the off season. And that there ain't no better motivation than a loss, like winning and being close and all that stuff. But having a devastating loss like that, that'll make you grind it out. It'll either make you quit or it'll make you grind it out. Well, it's interesting too, how like the, the field goal post has changed for him, right? After he won the first event, it was all, well, was that a fluke? Is he going to be able to do it again? Like that's that whole conversation's out the door. No one's saying that. Or, and if you are, then you're, you, you don't watch disc golf, but now the, the, it's no longer like, can he win again? It's like, okay, well now he has to win a major and it. And if he does win a major and then he doesn't win one for like, look what we're doing with Ricky, right? Like, yeah, it's the same thing with Ricky. Like Ricky, when is Ricky going to win? When, when is So it's the field goal post is always going to move. There's always going to be something you're chasing. You know, what's crazy about Anthony right now that I feel like is going on too, is when I watched this weekend, like he won with his C game, C to B game. It didn't look great. And Uh, I don't think anyone played great though. That final round. Sure. Sure. But old Anthony Barilla is not winning a tournament with his B game. (laughs) It's never going to happen. You're right. And so, and so there's, there's a, there's levels to it. You know what I mean? Like we, we've mm-hmm. seen Macbeth do this. We've seen Ricky do this, not look great. And then all of a sudden have these great rounds and win tournaments. 
uh, the field better be on high alert because as I look at everybody that's competing right now, Gannon, he looks really polished, man. I don't mm-hmm. see a lot of flaws in that game. Like, I feel like that's the game he's got. How good is he going to get? I don't know, but he's pretty consistent across the board. Like his biggest we were, challenge is just dealing with the baskets. That's what yeah, seriously, challenge. seriously. <laughs> and then when I, you know, I look at Calvin, like great player could work on his putting a little bit here and there, but his back end so nuts. Mm-hmm. When I look at Anthony, I'm like, well, I feel like he could work on all this stuff. I feel like mm-hmm. he could get a better sidearm. I feel like he could be a better putter, better outside the circle. His backhand's really good right now. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? That you should, the field should be on high alert because I feel like that ceiling, he's not polished yet. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he's, this is the first time that he's, he's like winning now. So, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, well, it, it is a scary time to, to, to be up there to at the top. And one of those guys that is always up the top at the top and potentially one of the guys that, uh, we kind of say has one of the highest floors, right? Like when he's not playing well, he's still getting oh top gosh. fives is uh Calvin Heinberg. And he joins tour life. Now, Calvin, welcome back to the show, brother. How are you doing? I'm hey, doing man, good. Uh, you're a popular Nashville. person. Oh, Nashville. Okay. Nice. Um, you know, got in my first, uh, practice rounds here at Mill Ridge today. And, um, you know, I, I think, I think the, the course is going to play pretty tough for me this coming week. Oh boy. Yeah. Is it yeah. as bad as, uh, I'm seeing and hearing through the grapevine? Um, I don't, I don't think the course is necessarily terrible. I don't, I don't really have many complaints necessarily about the course. I just think, uh, not having a forehand at this course in particular is probably Mm. going to, to hurt quite a bit. Um, but I, I don't, I don't hate the course. I, I, I've definitely heard some people complaining about it, but I don't, I don't think like there's necessarily a ton to really complain about. There's a couple holes that I feel like, meh, like there's like one par three I can think of off the top of my head somewhere in the middle of the course. It's like kind of uses old hole 18. Is that hole 11? I don't, yeah, yeah, that one I'm not, I'm not really sure what they wanted there. Um, the best shots that I've seen have been like lefty backhand turnovers. So, mm. um, but as a righty, I'm not, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do there. I guess maybe blast it over the trees and try to make a putt coming back. I don't know. But uh, as a whole, I, I, I think the course is okay. I think uh, people just, especially when things get changed, they tend to be a little more critical of things than they yep. maybe should be. Um, but yeah, for me personally, I, I just think the course is going to play extremely difficult without a forehand. So you, you're talking, you know, you brought it up. How how is it, how is the injury injury going? Like how where are you at on that? Where are you expecting to be able to start throwing forehands again? Um, you know, I probably won't throw any this week. Um, next week, we're going to, you know, give some a toss, probably lighter ones, see if maybe I might be able to scramble out at Champions Cup uh, a little bit with it. But really, I'm not too concerned about pushing it too quickly right now. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't really see the need to, to use it this week. This, this tournament doesn't um mean a whole yeah. lot to me it's just another tour event so um it's just it's like you know, leading up to the next one yeah does like uh throwing backhand affected at all like is there ever a point in time when you're throwing a backhand where you're like Ooh, no no the, I, or is I, it just completely yeah, fine? never never tweaked it throwing a backhand so backhand doesn't seem to do anything to it hmm Oh, uh, so, so it's basically the same thing as just resting playing this weekend. Cause what I would say is like, why not take the whole week off, go over to champions cup, practice a little bit, figure it out, you know, cause we were just talking like you're, you know, you're in that kind of air of major, major bust yeah. kind of thing. You know? Yeah, I know it's something I, I've actually, you know, was kind of thinking about a little bit, you know, after I played the course today, um, I don't know. I mean, it's possible, but I, that I might head over there early, but I, I think I'll probably still end up playing here. I, I feel pretty comfortable out at Northwood. I know they changed 
or I've heard they've changed a few holes out there, but um, I think like the ending stretch is uh, combining some of the old holes. So I think we finish okay. on that really cool uh, par five. I think is the ending hole. Okay. Cool. Where the the bass the the hole that's like as you're driving in the hole that you pass on the right. The oh, basket yeah, yeah, on, yeah. The basket's yep. on the hill. I believe that's the final hole this year. Okay. Cool. So it's a little yeah. bit more out in the open. I think is what they're trying to do at most of these events. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's a place I feel pretty comfortable. And then with only a few tweaks, I don't think it'll take too much practice to really feel that comfortable out there. We've played, you know, we played out there for, I guess it's maybe like three years now is how long we've yeah. been playing that course. So, yeah, um, and we had that one seven hour round out there too. So we know every nook and cranny of uh, Northwood. Exactly. Really well. <laughs> I know where all the worst shots land. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That was, that was a on crazy, your, crazy round. On your sidearm, like, when you're practicing, do you ever just like throw one in to check or are you just like, I'm not even going to try it. I'm not even going to look at it. I don't want to know. I'm going to just give it time, do my rehab off the course. And then eventually maybe in the field be like, okay, how does this feel? Yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't thrown them at all. I actually pitched like one tiny one today and that was the first forehand I had thrown, I guess probably since whatever chess.com or, or whatever it was. Mm. So I got, or, but yeah, I, so I haven't been throwing them. Um, it's just not really been something I've been pressing to get to push through. I think, you know, at first, you know, I kind of did that a little and I probably made things worse than, than they would have been if I had just stopped a little earlier. And yeah. um, so I'm not really necessarily pushing too hard um, on that. And I, I will eventually just go out to a field and, you know, throw some soft ones and then see where that puts me and then, maybe throw some a little harder if they, they feel okay and just slowly ramp up, you know, how much power I can put into them. So these last three events, Calvin, you've gone third, fifth, and second. Yeah. What are, what are things that you are actually working on? Or is, is there anything that you can like pinpoint of like, this is what I need to change in order to, you know, turn that second into a first or turn that third into a first. Um, I don't know. It can be tough to necessarily pinpoint. Like I, I think, you know, I, I don't necessarily think I threw the greatest when I was out at, at Houston. Um, you know, I still putted pretty well. I had like one little hiccup at the end of the second round where I missed two circle one putts. But other than that, I think I made the rest of my circle one putts at that tournament. I made all my circle one putts out at Austin. Um, I, I, it's just like, I think sometimes I just lose strokes when I, like you throw a bad shot. And then I think like without the forehand, sometimes you just lose the ability to, to scramble or you throw like an almost really good shot. And now I'm forced into like throwing like a weird step out or patent pending as opposed to just, you know, reaching out. So it's just like, I think, I think if like on most of the courses we played the last I guess my last three tournaments, like if I executed my game plan perfectly, I could birdie most of the holes. Mm. And, but it's just, it's really, it's just when you, you throw a little bit off of that perfect game plan, you don't necessarily have the ability to, you know, scramble and create extra opportunities for yourself when you might've been off on, on the first shot. Do you think your game right now, if you go out and you execute, do you think your game is good enough to beat everyone? Or do you think that you still kind of have to have, some things go your way uh i think it's gonna it's dependent on the course like okay. I, I really feel like i i probably could have had a chance at winning you know the past three tournaments that i played i don't think they were super forehand uh dominant like obviously as i said scrambling would have been nice sometimes definitely given some strokes up there but um most of the most of the holes you're able to game plan and like maybe the shot's more difficult, but you can throw a backhand and and still score. Um, so I, I definitely think it's still it's still capable and, and possible. I mean, I was I was in it in Austin and then last week. So I mean, both both down to hole 18. So I, it's definitely still possible. And I don't necessarily think things have to go my way. I just have to I just have to execute the shots. Um, I think there is a lower margin of error for me right now. But um, I do think it's still possible to win out there. Well, two things that didn't go your your way was 
the rollaways that you had on, I don't know what the hole is because they changed all of them, but the one where you were kind of going through the trees up, up through the left. Yeah. And I, I think yeah, it's what, eight now. Is it eight? Um, yeah, it's right after, it's right after the, uh, the par four that you're throwing over like the ravine or whatever. Um, yeah. so someone, someone, you know, mentioned on Twitter and I want to bring it up cause I think it's an interesting question. Do you think that the pro tour needs to do something to prevent rollaways? And their thought was, you know, outside of maybe like say circle one X or sorry, outside of like bullseye, if they made some sort of longer grass or, you know, maybe you throw some brick there or I don't know, something they were basically saying if what your shots did, you know, hit the basket or hit the pole and then hit the ground immediately right there and then roll off. Should a shot like that only roll off 10 feet? Yeah, I'm not sure there's a whole lot you can do. I really only, I think only one of the shots that I threw was really impacted terribly by the basket. The first the first round where I kind of like slid up into it. And since the, the bases are kind of like this, you know, it kind of put it up on edge. But the second, the second one, when I went and watched it, I mean, I hit left of the basket and it was already kind of rolling and I hit it and then it just kind of like slid around it. So it was already rolling before it even got to the basket. It's just, you know, it's like one of those things where it's, you just wish it stopped it. And it seems even more improbable when I hit the same base the day before, but I don't know if like, there's really a whole lot to do, like, especially in that situation, that green is just like super sloped. Um, and that kind of like, stuff. What you got to start wrapping it with pillows. So it's well, just like, well, what, <laughs> what, the question's more like, what if they create like a barrier? So what if they had like a semicircle on that slope? So anything that gets close to the basket and then starts rolling down the slope, basically hits into the barrier and drops the disc. Well, now you're going to hit the barrier. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think it's a good solution. I'm just saying what other people are are saying should happen. They just want to see shots that like get close to the basket. But then I would just say like maybe throw it softer, like right, have it come in without as much pace. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think know. it's There's just other, one of those things that it's a you freaky know, it's thing. Just, it's just unfortunate that it happened. But I don't think there's really much to change. Um, like because we we all want to see the rollaways right when like the person. Uh, clanks it into the cage and it drops yeah. down and rolls away. Like that's how you, that's the only way you three putt. You yeah. can't, can't really three putt that much in disc golf. It's very difficult to. Yeah. I mean, I think those, those sloped greens definitely create that possibility, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a whole lot to change. Cause like you even see weird reactions when the pro tour was doing the little like soft cushion, like wraps around the bottom of the pole. Yeah. Like I watch people yeah. come into those and like, yeah, it absorbs the uh, the shock when it when it comes into it. But then, like it, those were like almost so stiff that they would it push stuff back off of them. And I saw crazy reactions off of those too. So, I think, um, and I mean, even back before any of that, like I've seen people, you know, hit hit the pole and pop up and roll on a slope green. So I, I don't I don't know that there's a whole lot to to really change there. I think currently with the little the square bases they have that are kind of like pyramids, it probably increases the odds of, you know, getting a disc back up on, on end and rolling. But I mean, it's maybe it's make it the opposite, know. flip the pyramid upside down. Then when it hits, it kind of like maybe shoves it back down into the ground. I mean, that might work. I don't know how that would look as far as the, uh, the ad space and everything, but, um, I think yeah, the, what uh, if it was just like a, like an ice cream cone, like it all, went yeah. all the way up to the basket. And you just made it like an yeah. ice cream cone. That could actually look nice, Yuli. Hey, that actually look nice. <laughs> you I never know. know, but yeah, I mean, I think I think rollaways are always going to be a part of the game. Um, I don't think any of us probably want to see them do something too crazy about it. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the drop zone on hole eighteen? I mean, that's that's where it's always been. Um, I mean, I think it's. It's a weird, weird hole. I, I, I'm always, I'm not always a huge fan of holes where it's like throw it out of bounds and then advance to a drop zone and you just play from there. I, I always feel like that's, especially a hole like that. Like I don't necessarily think it, it really needs it. Like I, I really think we should probably just be play where it's last in bounds on that hole in particular. But 
Um, yeah, if, if they did that way, your shot and uh, Ben's shot would have been drastically different. Ben would have had like a pretty hard second shot still. He probably would have been like 350 feet or so. Um, mm. what, yeah. Did you guys like the change of that becoming hole 18? What, what were you guys' thoughts on that? Um, I think I like the old finishing stretch a little more than the new one. Um, you know, finishing on what used to be seven, seven, four, five, as opposed to what are now like, I don't know the numbers they're they're weird, but yeah, the, the, um, the new, the new changes, like, I feel like, I just felt like the old last three holes, you had a chance for two or more stroke swings on every single hole. Mm -hmm. And I don't really feel that way. Um, coming down the last three, like, I feel like what, whatever, what it, what is 16 now is like a pretty routine birdie. If you got the, the backhand forehand combo, um, mm -hmm. and then the next hole, like it's, it's really not bad. You can throw a hyzer out to the left and then have a hyzer into the green. So I, I feel like the, the only hole that really kind of brings in two strokes in my mind without like a crazy air it would be the last hole and that's just you know a lot of times with the shots you're throwing is pretty much you get the two or you get the four unless you play for the the three of course yeah the there, old there's, was there's like no the chance to get a five either finishing hole ever, ever. yeah i i liked it a lot yeah I, I i tend to like par four finishing holes a lot more too i know um i don't know i just feel like you know you got to walk up to that tee shot throw the tee shot and then you based on the results of that, you know, like you got to walk down the fairway and, you know, you got to execute another shot. I just think there's, there's more drama maybe to be built on a, a par four finishing hole than, than there is a par three, but uh, we get another par three finishing hole this week. So, Oh, heck yeah. People love that. Um, let's, let's jump back to your final round hole seven. You throw your tee shot and you, you know, you hit the tree. It's the one over the, the par four over okay. the ravine. Yeah. You hit the tree, you drop, you drop OB. Uh, I'm assuming right next to the OB, you didn't really have a shot in. So you take it considerably far back yeah. and then you proceed to throw what looked like you made it look really easy. I'm glad the commentary, uh, I'm glad Yuli and, and germ kind of talked about how difficult that shot was, but any thoughts on like laying up to that spot next year? Just like a little jump putt off the uh, tee and just throw that shot, throw that as your second shot. <laughs> no, no, I don't think I would ever play that hole that way. Um, How hard yeah, was no, that it shot? Out. I mean, I did get an incredible skip off of that shot as well. That really, yeah. that really helped. I mean, it was closer than I thought it was going to be when I let go of it. But yeah, I mean, that hole really is pretty, pretty routine, or it should be. It was just an awful tee shot. If you can throw far on that hole, there's there's really nothing you should be worried about. It's just kind of rip it over the ditch. And, and then, you know, you, you kind of deal with the, the green, which is kind of the real, you know, yeah, problem the second the shot, the, yeah, yeah, the, the second, second shot is really what good. should be the, the real problem on the hole. It's just through an awful tee shot, but, um, you know, getting out of there with a par was, was pretty sweet and, uh, definitely, definitely crucial, um, not to be bleeding, bleeding too many strokes in the final round. How bad did you want to throw a forehand on 16 after seeing Simon basically do the shot that you did and, and go OB? Um, I mean, I, I've gone into all these events pretty much uh, telling myself I wasn't going to throw them. You know, I, I thought like maybe I would bust one out, you know, at the end. But honestly, I got there and I mean, I executed that over the top shot the prior two days. So I had gone birdie birdie the prior two days. So it wasn't really you know, much to think about for me. I, I just threw it a little long and there, it really wasn't that bad. I think I was probably maybe like 24 or five feet away from the basket. I was still inside the circle, just on the other side of that little fence. Um, I just had like a, a stance I wasn't super comfortable with. I, I don't love like straddle putts when I'm closer to the basket. And mm -hmm. I had to kind of straddle out cause there was this little, this little twig that was up kind of by the fence and, uh, yeah, I mean that that putt was was not good. Skipped it off the top, um, but I, I don't think I don't think I really care. Like I wasn't struggling with that that over the top approach. So okay, I, I wasn't. It really forehand didn't really come across my mind because I I hadn't seen the backhand not work. 
And I think too, when like the wind, the wind gets up, I think the backhand dominant players have more of an advantage. I just think that, I think the backhand you can, you know, you, you generate so much more spin than the forehand, which I think helps a lot in wind. Yeah. So that might've, I don't know. Seems yeah, to help. It's definitely, I think, it's definitely I think possible. Sometimes. I mean, I, I don't know. I think, I think when it gets windy, it's just pretty important to have them both so that you can, uh, you can kind of fight the wind both directions and you don't have to yeah, for to sure. fight as much. So, but yeah, in that, in that particular instance, I mean, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't thinking, man, do I bust out this forehand? It was really more of a, I was really just thinking about, you know, executing the backhand like I did the prior days. Did, did your tee shot on 18 clip the tree? Uh, the first tree? It, yeah, did it? It, it was like, hard to tell. I don't tell. know if it clipped it. It, it definitely like, kind of went through the edge of it, but it was not where I was aiming. Um, I made the same mistake the prior day on the hole. I was just mm. too inside. I, like, I'll, like the shot had enough distance, I feel like, to get there. It's just like I needed to, instead of like kind of aiming here, I needed to aim wider and just trust the disc to come back. You know, why were guys going the Heiser route more this year? I feel like a, I feel like in years past, I've seen a lot more people go down the middle. Yeah, this year we kind of had like a, a helping wind. I feel like a lot on that hole. It was kind of like tail crossing, so it made it made the Heiser. Oh. I mean, it just didn't it didn't play as long this year to throw the Heiser. Um, you, did you go for that past, one? You like what was that? All right, well, I was seeing if Yuli went for it. I went for it all all three rounds. Not no Heiser. Oh, no, you went no up the middle. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, big boy, Yuli Heiser. <laughs> what? I could I could throw the Heiser as hard as I could and probably lay up by the drop zone. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, that yeah, makes just, a lot more sense then. I just think it was playing shorter with that helping wind for the Heiser, and if you you kind of had the power. It it just seems like a more straightforward shot. You don't have to like necessarily move your disc and have it drift left to right and and then back the other direction. So um, I think that was the play. I just, I just didn't throw it well. I didn't throw it well back to back days. So just should have probably not been my play, I guess. <laughs> so you made a comment about you weren't like really too worried about this week, not having a forehand, even though, you know, playing this course, it, it seems like a forehand is going to be very important. Are you at the level now where you're almost just kind of waiting for the majors. Like, obviously I'm sure you still want to win every tournament you enter, but is that kind of where, you know, winning, winning another time on tour, it's like, Oh, great. Nice. But you're, you're really wanting to get that major win. Yeah. I think, um, I don't know. I, I, I want to win every tournament I, I enter, you know, I, I just, I mean, I, I just think currently, you know, maybe expectations are a little bit lower just because I know, you know, there's going to be some tricky spots. Um, but I, I, I definitely just, I still care about every tournament I play. Um, I just, after playing today on, on this particular course, I just, I know my odds are lower than, than they would have been like the past three weeks. Um, there's just like holes that I, that there's just holes that I think that, if you have a good forehand, you're probably going to be giving yourself a look quite a bit. And then there's even some par fours where just the approach to me just seems way more open throwing the forehand than, than throwing a backhand. Um, so I, I know the odds this week, just they, they feel more stacked against me than they, they have in the, you know, the past few. Well, we don't I have, like, yeah, go. Yuli. I like took notes today and uh, during the practice round and I was, I was counting like, seven seven holes to where i was like okay if i you know I, i'm not like i have a serviceable forehand like i'm not yeah. throwing um not top 25 not, of course yeah. well i'm not throwing it very far but i can throw it like 330 360 somewhere in there yeah and there was i think there was like seven seven shots that i came up with to where i was like okay if i play these perfect i could be like three under and like calvin saying if you have that more power, like all hyzer forehand play, or even a long flex play, yeah, like you're going to be giving yourself looks on those quite often. Yeah. 
And I was thinking that I might not even play this week because of being so far behind the eight ball on there. I, I can't afford to like lose seven shots before I even start. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. We don't see that happen very often, but I feel like that's going with how many events the pro tour has. I feel like that will be a trend moving forward is like certain players just like, I'm not going to that tournament. That course is not good for me. Cause like, why? Yeah. Why would you? Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, if it's, but... if it's calm, if the forecast is calm, it's totally doable. You can throw roll. There's other shots you can throw to kind of manipulate yeah. the flight patterns and stuff. But in Nashville, it's always windy. And so mm-hmm. not only do you have like that barrier of angle control, but then the wind as you're throwing more stable to get the shot that they're trying to make you do. And a slight miscorrection of that shot, which is like usually a flex stall to hit it soft, a slight miscorrection and you're gone. And they're putting out of bounds on like the bottom of the slopes and stuff. And so it's like, they really designed the course um, kind of like, a certain way to enter into the greens. I feel like for a lot of these and it's, it's, it's not with a backhand. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of, a lot of holes or like, you might be able to make something work, but it's, it's going to be tricky. It'll definitely be tricky. And like the room for air is, is very low, but like, there's even like, I don't know, like, man, I don't really know the numbers very well out here, but there's this one par three that I can think of. And it's like, like it has this little sucker tunnel gap that you can see it. It's like a 360 foot hole. Maybe uh, it was on the course last year. It might've been hole 14 last year. I think is it right before the really tough par four. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's right before that. But like, oh, is, that, is that tunnel super tight now? It's even more overgrown. Oh yeah. Uh, no, no, it, it's about the same, but it's just like, they, it's such a tight so, tunnel and the OB line on the right. It's just oh, like, yes, it's that's right. right there. And then there's the big bunker on the left side of that tunnel that it's like, especially if like, I'm not throwing a forehand at all. If I throw in that bunker, that's an instant bogey. If yeah. I miss a little and I kick that's to the a, right. That's, that's a flex forehand bogey. hole for sure. Yeah. Like, like you, you can see the basket from the T, but the play is literally to flex it out of the, mm-hmm. the visual fairway. You kind of like, push it out to the left and then come back in. So like, yeah, like that one in particular, like if I, I like pretty much have to just, unless I'm going to, I'm feeling great and want to try <laughs> to pipe a fairway driver down that little tunnel, I'm just chip a chip a I'm back in out to the outside putter out to the left and then, yeah. then having to throw a putter into the green. Yeah. It's tough to win tournaments when you start playing holes they, that you can't birdie. Yeah. They used to have the OB line being the um, fence, oh. and they actually moved the fence. It's on the opposite or the, side, the, right? Yeah, they moved the line now to the tree line. So now it's, like, even closer. Because I was going down the tunnel last year, I remember. And then because I felt like it would be really tough to, like, get into those bushes and get to the other side, throwing a backhand. And now they're like, yeah, no, <laughs> we're going to bring it out here. <laughs> Yeah, it's right there. Like, there's no room for air. Like, if you're like, and you're pretty much forced to throw like a little hyzer flip up. It's like you slightly over flip it, you're out of bounds, right? You over hyzer it, you're in the tree bunker on the left. It's, it's not a backhand hole. I know. It that. seems like they're like. It seems like that hole is like close to being good. They just like they reversed it. They needed to make the right play, the straight shot. But the risk is if you mess up, you go OB. And then they need to make like the really, really difficult play, the flex forehand. So then that way you actually can play the risk reward where right now it's like no one is throwing up the gut if they have a forehand. See, I don't feel like uh, it's bad to have a hole like that. Like I, I'm fine with that hole in particular, but there's like three that are almost the exact hole. Like you go to hole, our new hole two is oh, yeah. the same shot. It's the same shot as that one, even a wider hyzer, but you can is throw it a flex. completely a new t- hole two? I, no. It, old, new hole two is old hole. I don't know. It, it used to be on the course. Okay. Um, I feel like that hole is a little bit easier. It plays a little shorter and it's a little yeah. wider. But, but yeah, it is. It's another one of those holes where you, you, you pick, you're basically throwing a forehand out around that big tree or, you know, you're throwing a baby <laughs> flex shot with a mid range down the gut, you know? with ob that they brought out again like closer to the fairway so like yeah. you miss a little bit and you can go you can go OB. I don't know i felt oh. like there was a few 
few yeah holes there's like definitely that. a few or it's like you know we were just talking about whatever hole number it was we were just talking about two holes later that approach into the green like it's wide open forehand backhand's pretty congested it's a par four new par four that uh, uh -huh. i don't know definitely definitely i definitely saw a lot of forehands out there and maybe even more so just based on the direction the wind was blowing today yeah um I don't know if that's like going to be the consistent direction or whatnot, but I was definitely having to throw a bunch of shots that were like on backhand, trying to fight the wind and and just not get thrown out of bounds. Which yeah, it could flip and then just be like a beautiful wind for some backhand, just pushing yeah. you straight. I mean, it could happen, but uh, I don't know. It played it played so hard today for me. Hopefully, you guys <laughs> don't get any rain either. That course is not drain well. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Yeah. Yikes. That means it's going to be flop fest all week. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll all see. right. Well, yeah. uh, we appreciate you jumping on Calvin. It's always fun to talk to you. Uh, I guess good luck this week. If you end up playing, if not, we'll see you in what is it, Peoria. Is that where we're going? We're out Peoria? To Peoria next. We'll see you in Port Peoria. And we are running back the worst triple shot of all time video as well so we'll have, to, we'll have to try to beat our score i know the course is a little different but we gotta when we when we shoot last time like 17 over actually i don't even remember I we might. Clue. well i'll look it up all i remember was ezra hit a tree five feet off the tee pad to start the video and i knew <laughs> it was gonna be down i knew it was gonna be downhill from there i think i actually threw i think i actually think that i think i actually threw a bad shot and Ezra was like, oh, well, we can't do worse than that. And then he proceeded to hit a tree right off the tee. And we were like, yeah, well, there, there's always a worse option out there. Yeah. So, uh, you, you got anything else? Uh, no, no. All right, Calvin, um, any, any shout outs, anything, anything going on right now that you want to let the people know? Um, nothing, nothing new really right now, but, uh, just shout out my sponsors in of a millennium squatch um flight factory uh as always just shout them out you know they keep me on the road and all y'all you know supported me you know through merch and everything thank you all and uh you know without you all the fans it really this is impossible for us so super thankful for all them are we gonna see that uh jersey shirt that zach melton was wearing is that oh, my face he, on it well i think it had a lot of your faces on it i think it had about no, 50 no faces i think on that it. is a custom made one for him by him but um okay but so maybe if, maybe if you got enough that in the future but maybe if I'm you got enough demand that. enough demand enough people asking about it yeah i mean that's possible you know if there's enough demand <laughs> maybe maybe we'll make it happen but I just can't imagine that the, the demand <laughs> is that high for a shirt that just has my face just all over it. Guys, if you want this shirt, and trust me, you want this shirt, go right now to Calvin's Instagram on his last post. Say, I want this shirt. Blow it up. Blow it up. <laughs> Comment, I want this shirt. Um, is that is it posted anywhere right now that you can see it so people can get kind of get a sneak peek? Did Melton post anything on his Instagram with wearing it? Passive. Right. There has to be something at some point, but if not, you know, I'm sure I can get him to send me a picture of it. I know he has pictures of it. So yeah, maybe do a little, maybe do a little poll, maybe, you know, have him send a picture of it, put it up yeah. on your Instagram story. Should. Do you want one of these? Do you not want one of these and yeah. see what happens? Okay. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah. I'll, but you I'll already do, have, I'll track, you down already the have... Picture. I'll track down the picture. I'll make the poll. I think I know how you're voting. But I just well, don't I'm, know. I'm I voting yes. You already have three people in the chat saying they'll buy it. You so see, but I just don't that's, know. That's you know, the yes, right but there. Are you really gonna buy it? You know, like they're saying I'll buy it. I mean, what do you what do you want them to say? No, are you gonna buy it, bro? Are you gonna buy it? Oh, I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, you can you know, you can just you know, you know, hand that one underneath the table to me, you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> you want a free game? It's free promotion for you, Calvin. I'll wear it on I'll wear it on one of these podcasts. Okay. All right. Nice. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll trade you. Just so here, I can I'll, see. I'll, just what so about I can trade? See. What about trade? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a tour life shirt. Shirts. I'll, I'll trade shirts. All right. I'm in for a trade. Uh, another Jersey person swaps. said that. Another oh, person no. said they'll buy it. That's four. You got four people right now in the chat saying they're willing to buy it. So. All right. Sweet. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So. All right. Well, we appreciate it, Calvin. Good luck this week if you decide to play. If not, we'll see you in Peoria. Thank you. 
All right, take it easy. There's Calvin Hyper, ladies and gentlemen. Soon to have the new release, the Heimberg face shirt. Have you seen the yeah. shirt, Yuli? I have. Yeah, I have. It's, it's amazing. Fantastic. It's a, I got to play with <laughs> Melton while he was wearing it, and it was awesome. It was very nice. All right, we have Ezra coming in at the top of the hour. We don't have Ezra yet, right, uh, Silas? Okay, he'll, he'll probably come in right on time, honestly, knowing him. Um, let's talk a little bit. We did talk a little bit about the, the course. So I kind of want to talk a little bit more about the changes at Jonesboro before, uh, we go into maybe some of the other storylines with some of the players. Uh, I thought the rerouting wasn't terrible. Like I thought the course actually flowed pretty well. Um, I didn't, I didn't hate the re the rerouting too much. Hole one was an interesting hole to start on too, right? Like that super hard, long, like that's a weird kind of hole to start your tournament on. Oh, Silas is doing weird stuff. Wait, is Yuli gone? Wait, it might just be me right now. I, 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 I'm here. Oh, he was in. Oh, oh he was okay. in here the whole time for me. I, me and Yuli were just having a full on conversation. Sorry. Um, so we were talking about the new whole one, and Yuli was saying if we if if this was the course and there was no old course and we just saw this, you, you're saying that we would be like, oh, this is not bad. Yeah, I think so. I, I yeah, think it's a good finish. Right. It's a decent finishing hole. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad. It has the no. two stroke swinger. That's what you kind of want. I don't like that. If somebody had, I didn't like this scenario. I didn't like that. AB had to go first. And if he throws it, OB, somebody can just go pitch, pitch easy yes. par. That's yes. tough to me. Um, because the first person who has the momentum then is in an awkward position. Uh -huh. If it was such a tough hole where the landing, like both landing zones were tough, then yes. it would make him have to make a decision. He could maybe do the little bit of easier shot to lay up and then put the pressure on Galvin type thing. And it, it didn't have that thing. It was like, okay, no, he has to go. And then if he messes up, Calvin has the easiest one of his life. Uh, Edwin said that the course this year played 1.7 strokes harder per round, uh, this year versus last year. And I think the reason for that is probably not so much the course change. I think it's the wind last year. We only had one day that was windy. Uh, this year it looked like it was pretty windy. The majority of the time out there. It, it got harder. Okay. It was two strokes harder. I think per round with the changes mm -hmm. that they made. Well, they definitely, the next change they made definitely made it harder, right? That little dinky hole number two. Now that little dinky hole, that was like an auto birdie or one that you're like, I have to birdie this hole. They now like they pushed it back. It's a little bit farther. Uh, that was a challenging hole, right? Like yeah, that was they, a good, that was a good change. That's definitely a, at least a stroke harder. That was a tough one to get. Yeah, it was a tough shot. But then they they like pushed OBs back and 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 closer to the, to like the landing zones. They put OB in different spots. Like even hole our starting hole one, that was probably twenty twenty five feet closer to the basket as out of. So you had to carry a longer distance, which was already uh -oh. a pretty tough carry, nice. especially in the wind. So that was different. Um, also hole seven, the carry was, I, th I think a little bit longer. Windy days would, I would do Edwin. I would do Saturday last year, I believe was the windy day. And, and then, uh, this year, Sunday was probably the windiest, I would say. Yeah. Sunday yeah. was the so last year, Saturday, brutal. this year, Sunday. Um, and then 16s out of bounds yeah. was different. I saw that they added the OB down the left-hand side to make everyone go right. I actually like that change. Um, same, it, forces same. That, it forces you because if you go up the middle, like the second shot's not really that hard where now the second shot was kind of tough. I, I never really saw anyone do the Simon or Calvin play going over the top. Like that was only people that were like super out of position and both Simon yeah. and Calvin were in the fairway. So clearly they made that hole a lot harder, which I liked. Um, I thought 
I was sad that whole 17 was gone. Old whole 17. They turned that into like a par three. I thought old 17, that par four was really good. So yeah, it was great. I, I think they might've did that to add room for the finish. Like did they have like vending and all that stuff where that T was, I'm guessing since yeah. that's where hole one and 18 was. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of those where it's like, they had to kind of change that whole similar to like what they did with Waco, right? Like got rid of that one hole, added a hole that was worse, but might've made the whole tournament better. So as a whole, right. For spectators and stuff. So. And even uh, 14 was, was, was harder. So last year, everybody was just going way deep, put a little extra on it. You can go as far as you want over the green. And there was actually a, a out of bounds line past the hole about 60 feet. Mm. No, I like that. Which really changes that. It, yeah. It really changes that hole. And the pine trees grew up as well. They get taller every year. And so like laying up to your spot, you almost have to go right at it in certain wind situations, which I think made it a, a little bit harder. So it, all in all, I think it was two strokes. Harder. We normally are pretty critical and pretty hard on the, on the coverage, but I do want to give a shout out to the disc golf pro tour and DGN for the standalone cameras because they have been able to capture, they're putting them on great holes and they've been able to capture some really phenomenal stuff to where, you know, I don't know if we have the clip Silas, if we can show it. Cause this was like, this is kind of first off acing a hole in a tournament is crazy, but acing the same hole back to back days in a tournament is potentially unheard of for like an actual course. I'm sure some people have done it. But like looking at this video play, like it looks like the same video. Like the timing of when the disc went in the basket for both shots is nuts. Nuts. Um, so shout out to Brandon Sides and also shout out to the Disc Golf Pro Tour because without these standalone cameras, Yuli, we don't get that clip. We don't get the clip of him acing yeah. back to back holes. And, Pretty uh, and good. I, I like it. Pretty good pixelation too. Pretty, oh, that? you're saying what? it's like decent coverage? Like the you, was, was that sarcastic? A bit, a bit sarcastic. I think <laughs> um, the standalone camera is great, but that looked like a security camera at like a gas oh, yeah. station. They've been having weird things. It seems like they're kind of pulling. Like it seems like they're almost doing the thing where it's like they. Uh, they're like exporting it multiple times. And every time you export it, it gets a little bit downgraded size. Do you know what's going on there? Like how I know you had a, I know you had a hot take on uh tour life. So let's, let's tap you in here while we wait for Ezra on uh, what's going on with, with live coverage and the quality of the, the picture here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it, it's weird because you're right. Every time you like re-export, you obviously lose quality because you know, you're re-exporting something that's, already been exported so you're gonna lose a little bit of quality there but it i would think that the standalone cameras would be a little bit better than like in like quality wise just because they're standing still um mm -hmm. rather than like moving around but also the actual camera itself might not be as good as like what they're actually using for the coverage and stuff so i think they're just setting up like their secondary cameras or like their old cameras or you know whatever whatever secondary stuff that they have laying around and they're just plopping a camera down just because they have the the extra means to do so if you will yeah okay. i just feel like if this was caught on crispy nice mm footage this would have got could have been one of the things that go viral that's it what i think about our our podcast yeah. but if <laughs> you're not wrong you're not wrong <laughs> no my thing is though is like why not use that camera and have another camera person on another card that way there's less breaks in action you know what i'm saying like why oh. not have a, a why not use that standalone camera and just have it manned and Good just point. do another card you know, uh -oh. if they already have a camera there, they just uh -oh. need one more person. Size, your your mic is your mic is struggling here. Oh, is it? It was going in uh, and out. Oh, was it? I did, wait, did now. you hear what I was saying though? Yeah, you're saying you're saying they essentially have 
at most of these tournaments, they have these two standalone cameras. I think they had it on hole one and then they had it on um, whatever hole that is now. I don't know what hole that is now, but they had two standalone cameras. So you're saying it's hole 15. Yeah. You're saying, wait, why? Cause it'd be one thing if we have standalone cameras on every hole like golf does, and you can literally every shot's filmed. You're saying why you're, you're thinking it'd be better if they actually had those two standalone cameras on someone and they're yeah. walking around the course filming. Yeah. Like, why not just have like use that uh, to cover another card? Then you have more shots being, you know, broadcasted on the broadcast. You know, you have more throw in action, mm-hmm. but you lose the, you, you lose that, you know, you lose the ACE, the double ACE thing, but it, it's, it comes down to what's more important, I guess, at the end of the day. Yeah, it is interesting. I'm going to text Ezra real quick to see where he's at. He's probably finishing up his set in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Or he got the time, the little time change guy. Oh, no. Eastern time. Oh, yeah, Eastern no. time. Those time got zones, him. man, they'll get you every time. Mm-hmm. Kelsey has turned into an incredible chef. I don't know what happened. Really? I get, I get meals now every single meal. I used to cook all That's my food. Awesome. Yeah, I it just all of a sudden just one day she just started cooking and I was like she would just bring food and she's like do you want this I was like yeah and then how was the first how was the first meal though was it like it was yeah, eggs, I'll take it and I love eggs so I said yes okay so it's good <laughs> no she makes she makes some really good meals so very very happy um, we have no response on Ezra here so I'm telling not- you that time change got. Someone, oh, here we go. Oh, no, that was Silas. Um, someone said, had we seen the Chris Dickerson post? Have I was just about that? to bring that up. Yeah. What? What, what is, is it? Do you have the post, Silas? I'll, I'll try and uh, put it on yeah, screen see, real quick. See if you can find it. Uh, someone's saying it's something about his hip. Got some sort of hip issue? Did he, did he say anything to you, Yuli, about that? I haven't heard, no. Hmm. Might be a little injury situation. Simon Lazar also posted on his Instagram this past week saying that he was dealing with some injuries with his back. So seems like a lot of people are uh, a lot of people on the struggle bus right now with some some of the injuries. Yeah. Oh, here we go. That you is way what? okay. That's yeah. way too small to read, size. Uh, so are you on it, Yuli? Do you want to read it? Because I can't. I I'm can't read it that. Up. Yeah, I'm Silas has it on. The th- is that is that the Champions Cup photo? Oh, is he talking about maybe not playing in Champions Cup? To wait, he won two years ago though. It's not like he's defending, huh? Why did he post that photo? Hmm. Okay. All right, ready. He says yeah. after having two radiologists and an orthopedic surgeon review my MRI images, there are a lot of findings. I have moderate to severe osteoarthritis in, and, or no, in my hip. It's bad enough that it's caused multiple bone spurs. Ooh. I also have evascular ne- uh, necrosis. This means there is a part of my hip that is not getting blood flow. And as a result of that, my bone is dying. What? His bone is <laughs> the, dying? The necrosis is just starting, and it's very tiny and localized for right now. My hip is apparently deformed enough that it, um, enough that they ask if I was born with a birth defect or had a major car accident. What? I have never had any issues with my hip until my T pad slip at the DGPT championships in October. After rehabbing it all season, I felt 90% or better. There are certain things that I can cause or that can cause pain in the front of my hip or groin area. 
but it's more than manageable. Seth Muncy suggested I get an MRI after discussing my pain with him at chess.com in Florida. We're hoping that we can rule out any major problems. This is obviously not the result I was hoping for. The doctors I have talked to so far have told me my only options are shots for pain and eventually a total hip replacement. Yikes. They have also said that it that if I can put off the hip replacement until I am 50, at least, that's ideal. I am already making appointments with doctors to look into some alternative therapy options like PRP or um, exo. I don't know, good luck saying that. <laughs> something something special. I have been told by the doctors in my area that I do not need to stay local for this. So if you are someone or you or someone you know have a specialist orthopedic or sports medicine and are um basically after that he's just saying that if there's anybody out there that can help him. But that's basically the gist of it. He's going to continue um, to strength train and uh, Jeez. hoping to do that as long as po- possible. Jeez. What the He heck? said, I have a co- yeah, I have accomplished a lot of great things in my career. I have a lot left to give to the sport. Wow, that was tough. Talking about hip replacement stuff, man, that's – that's like um that's like some serious stuff, dude. Yes. That's not that's not what you want to be dealing with when you're in your what is he like his late twenties, I guess. Yeah. So did is is he just gonna continue to play with the pain and just like take shots and stuff? Looks like it. I mean, when that's your only option, then it, there's no like, hey man. Like him not playing, it doesn't sound like it's actually hurting him. It's oh, just okay. that is what it is, you know, because um, the bone's essentially dying. So there's no like, I don't think you can just be like, hey, if I don't do anything, will it like not die as fast? Jeez. But I don't know. We This might be something that we get him on. I know that would be a tough, a tough topic for him, but yeah, at least get a little bit more insight on what he's planning on doing. Um, all right. So, uh, it looks like Ezra thought when I told him nine o'clock that he thought I said, I meant central time. I knew it's an it. Interesting. Uh, he said he's in sport plus right now though. So, uh, do we want to, I mean, Ben's not on yet. Is he, he's coming on and, Yeah, do you want to just push Silas or push uh push Ezra back then, I guess? Right? We're not Yeah, after A B, I guess. Because we're not gonna have to I mean, what is he gonna come on and talk for five minutes? That doesn't that doesn't seem that great. Uh, just whenever we're done with A B. So just let him know like A B's coming on at nine forty and you know, maybe maybe ten o'clock, I guess. And then we, get, we talk to Ezra for like 10, 15 minutes or whatever. Okay. Chris Dickerson, five events prior to hurting his hip at Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship. His average finish was 16th. And those five events since then, it's 14th. So he's still playing consistent. Hmm. So it doesn't seem like it's affecting his game too much, which is which is good. Um, I guess we can talk about the FPO real quick. Okay. Chris is Datar dominated. All right. Uh, now we can go on to some other things that happened at Jonesboro. Oh, wait. I want to, oh. I want to talk about this, this, this course we're playing this week. Okay. Just because Chris, we just saw Chris post fell on a keypad. That's the first time that he like really felt it. He said, right. On and, the standardized and, uh, T-pads. No, I'm saying he 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 said in that post that I the first time it started hurting was at the Pro Tour Championships when he fell. Um, okay. Um these T-pads here, they're like 
trampolines. They're like bouncing. Is that good or bad? No, that like the the structures that they built. There's three that I saw that just move when you get on when you get on there. Oh. And then for some reason, all of a sudden, it's a cool to have drop offs off the end, like big drop offs. Huh. So this is what happened to me here last year. I fell off the edge of a tee pad here. I did too. And we fell off the same I one. Hole seventeen. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I hit. I hit. Um. It was bad. I landed on a rock. It was horrible. I pulled out of the tournament. I don't know. Is there something they can do about that? Or like, I think that they should just build out the tee pad a little longer and have the tee pad. Here's where you release and actually have a follow through. Yeah. Like have a three or four feet of extraness, extraness, I guess you'd say. Extraness is great. Yeah. Extraness. That'd be great. Wait. So these uh, are, these are like the music city open. They posted saying this year's music city open is using X step pro turf from disc concepts at mill Ridge which will also be the standard for disc golf pro tour events starting in 2025. We've already received amazing feedback regarding the turf T pads for participants during our MCO test event. Yuli, these are going to be the, the T pads. Hey, the T pads are fine. Forward. I'm talking about the structures, like the hmm. wood, the, like structures the, the, the bottom, the bottom left of this T uh, where it's like elevated. That's another one you're saying where you're like, we're launching off of a, a three foot. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, that's kind of scary looking actually. And there's other ones with like rocks, like right there. The first, the first one's just like, Oh, you follow through. And then you're like tiptoeing around the rocks to not. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Size. Let Ezra know that we have been coming on in five minutes. So unless he wants to talk for four minutes, if he wants to come on and talk for four minutes, we you can come on but, and talk for four minutes. So T pads are a problem. That's a safety yep. problem. I feel like for the field, the next thing is, is course design, man. I don't think it's an accident that all of the players are getting injured. It's not oh. an accident. Hmm. I think it's because of the course design is making these guys throw as hard as they can every single time like this. Oh, sidearm. And um, I do. I think that's a big problem. I mean, look at you go down the list with people with problems all, all all of the sudden. Listen, when I was playing, let's say even five six years ago, there was never a lot of injuries, dude. Never. Hmm. There was like a couple little things here and there. Since this development of like the pro tour and some of these holes in the last year. Eagle, Calvin, Paul, Chris, myself, you go down the list over and over and over again. Well, do you think, do you, cause I don't necessarily want them to change the courses too much to make them shorter, but I'm not saying you, that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this is a problem that has to be addressed. Like how do we, how do we address the problem? Is it the athlete? The athlete has to take more care of their body and yeah. go do these rehabs and all of this stuff after every single round is it up to them there's not enough money for that so is it the responsibility okay. of the pro tour to protect their assets we will hold off on that and we, how do you do that we will hold off on that because we do have ezra here ezra wants to come in this is the five minute speed zone ezra here okay he said i don't want to wait i want to come on so we're gonna go we're gonna go <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go. I'm just gonna hold it. <laughs> we're gonna go rapid fire here. We got Ezra. Uh, I can come on later too. I don't want to jump in front of Ben's time. I just had no idea it was it was uh, East Oak. <laughs> well, if you you can either go now and it's four minutes of Ezra time, or okay. you can go on later and then we can actually talk and not be rushed. It's up to you. Uh, let's. Uh, I'll just come back if that's okay, then. Okay, you'll come back. All right. Next up. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Hey, guys. I'll see you back. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, okay, so let's, let's, I guess let's finish talking. We have been coming on in a few minutes. So let's finish talking. Let's, let's wrap up what you were saying there. Because it's an important topic, it topic Brody. I really feel like I feel, I feel like our players are getting injured, and they're getting injured um, too are fast. We, too many people right now 
have, have big time problems. And I think that people are just being like, Oh, he's just hurt. No, that's not, that's not a thing that's happened in the sport guys. It's not a thing that is, that is like, was the normal. Are there too many events back to back to back though? Maybe it's very may- possible. Like, do we need to have more breaks in between these events so that players can take some time off and not continuing to this is you know what this is a great question for Ezra I think this, I would be very interested let's hold come this. back for a second <laughs> yeah yeah let's uh let's hold this until Ezra comes back because I'm very curious to see if he goes on the side of yeah the courses and the, the amount of time we play them is the issue or if he's going to go the side of like players need to take care of their bodies players need to recover better it'd be interesting <laughs> to see what he says on that it's hard to, it's hard to afford that kind of stuff. It really is for a lot of these players. I mean, the top guys that we know, we don't even know sure. all the injuries that are going on the people who aren't, you know, on yeah. coverage and very popular. We don't even know what's going on with them. Oh, yeah. Guarantee you, there's more injuries. You make a really good point and, you know, maybe it's is some of it can also be formed though, Yuli, cuz, you know, I've I've probably have thrown more forehands than anyone on this planet with the amount of trick shots and ultimate and all that stuff that I did. And I'm, I'm throwing hard, but I'm throwing, maybe the way I'm throwing is a, a safer, you know, on my elbow, my shoulder. Sure. So the, there could be some sort of form situation. Cause you look at like a pitcher, someone brought it up in chat. I think that's a good point. You look at a pitcher pitchers have to take breaks. They can't, they can't just go out there and throw gas every day. And I think it's the way, but like, um, it's it's the way they're throwing. Right. And so maybe, I don't know, maybe some of these guys are getting their elbow in really bad spots and to do that over and over and over again and do it as hard as they are. Maybe that's not a good thing. I don't, I don't think so. And, and then the recovery right after you think about a pitcher, you think about any sport, <laughs> they got guys right there. As soon as you're done, you come off your quarterback. What's mm-hmm. going on. You got that thing wrapped up in ice guys working on it. Um, I don't know. I think I, I was thinking about this today when I was playing the course and then I was thinking about all the injuries going on. Uh, and I, tried to remember like back in the day, was there a lot of injuries with the top players and they're just to my recollection, there wasn't. And this is a long time, long time ago. So there, there might've been little things here and there, but I don't remember people being like, yeah, I'm out for the season. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's an interesting one, you know? And I, I think the emphasis on throwing far is, it's higher now than it maybe has ever been before. And so maybe you do have a lot of these guys that are just going out to the field and literally just chucking it. Right. You have, you have to, and here's, here's a, here's a horrible, a horrible thing that I hear people say. And it's the truth that they go, if you want to learn farther and I've heard teachers teach this, go to the field and just start throwing as hard as you can. That's the best way to do it because there's no, there's no actual evidence of like get into these positions for the most part. Mm -hmm. And then you will throw far, you know, it's like this mystery. Uh, And then you have people who are doing it naturally like Anthony Barilla. And so then the field has to catch up to that standard, like Calvin Barilla, all these people. And you're like, I have to get distance because now you're going to have course designers being like, okay, I'm not going to have these guys come into my course and dominate and shoot 16 under, and they're going to try to change it. And so then the courses are going to get longer for whatever these skill sets are. And I feel like we're missing something here. I feel like it's the, the, there's gotta be something with course design that you can pull it back a little bit instead of like pushing the limits of like, dude, today I played this course and I, I'm sorry, but it's just, you're throwing as hard as you can on every single shot. There's no touch involved. Zero. There's one hole where it's like, all right, have a little touch into the screen. And I'm talking for everybody. Yeah. That's not just, that's not just like little dinker. You leave mad because the course is like, I'm generally worried about the field. Right, you make a good point. You make a good point. 
we'll kind of see uh kind of see where we're at on that i guess i'm very curious to hear what ezra has to say about that because i think his his perspective might be might be an interesting one because he had he had a take on the burnout and like how he just doesn't think a burnout is like he doesn't believe that you can actually burn out or you know he kind of paraphrased it a little bit differently than that but uh any sight on ben here we might be striking over two on our middle guest hmm you you want to you want to send did, a text yeah. out? You want to send a text out just to see where he's at? She just had it as we're on. Um. All right. Well, we'll uh we'll audible here a little bit, and you know I'll go down this. I'll go down the scoreboard a little bit. It was nice to see, nice to see Isaac Robinson and Simon Lazat back on the leaderboard this past weekend. You know, Simon was on recently on the pod and was talking about some of his struggles and how he wasn't playing that well. So that was really nice that he was uh he was bouncing on. Isaac Robinson also I think he shot the best round two, I wanna say, might have been. Uh he struggled though, final round. Did not play well, unfortunately. Kind of dropped out of it pretty quickly. His putt was off. Um, so that was tough to watch, but it was good to kind of see him getting a little bit into form leading up into champions cup. He actually, actually fall, he fell all the way down to 10th place, uh, six shots back out of the lead there. Matty O final round ended up shooting a 52, just a blazing final round for Matty O. Some people were saying that some of the people that got out a little bit earlier got some better conditions. So I'm sure that probably helped him and I'm sure he, you know, he's not going to complain about it, but he shot up quite a bit on the leaderboard shooting a 58, 62, 52, 10 shots better than his previous round out there. So that was an impressive final round for Maddie. Uh, we need flags on these baskets, Yuli. Yeah. Why? How is this not? How is this not something that's addressed? I, I don't think that's a big cost, and you can just use the same flag at every tournament, or you have the sponsor. I don't know. I don't know. Have the sponsors pay for the flag as extra marketing, or I? It, it it was tough watching it, and I'm just going off of like how fast your shirt and shorts are moving, and then also. You know, if you have a 30 foot putt, I can't see what direction the wind is. I, I have no visual aid of that. So flags on baskets. I don't, doesn't seem like it's a crazy thing. I think it'd be helpful for the players, but more importantly, I think it's just a better thing to give context to the commentators and to the viewers at home. So hopefully that gets solved. Simon is up through a 500 foot shot that ended up going 70 feet. He was doing what I like to call maximum time aloft or the boomerang. That was awesome. Not a, uh, not ideal. Definitely not what you're, Over the top. Uh, you're going for here. <laughs> when you he go first run threw it, Yuli is out of his hands. I was like, <laughs> if he gets to the basket, I swear. <laughs> and then like, you see the camera, like slowly start zooming out and you're like, wait a second. That's that went 70 feet in front of him. Luckily for him, it did find the fairway. So that was nice. But uh, um, yeah. Ben just uh, texted me and said he'll be on in five minutes. Was dealing with a couple couple things. Sorry for the delay. Okay, so we'll have a quick conversation with Ben then. Um, and we were we were on a tight ship over here, Yuli. We were on a tight ship. Yeah. Um, last thing here that I have from Jonesboro is, um. I actually, some people were commenting that they didn't like the slope green. Some people were commenting that they didn't like that. It was windy. I don't know what those people are talking about because I'm pretty sure if you watch Jonesboro and it's in perfect conditions, it's a really boring course because it's too easy. So I think having those elements on a couple of those holes and then having the wind up, I thought it made, it made the final round pretty enjoyable to watch for me. I thought it was fun. Yeah, it was hard. It was difficult. 
I liked was, it. It was a good test. So there is your Jonesboro recap. I don't know if I missed anything. I don't think I did. And again, shout out to Brandon Sides, back to back aces. I don't so cool. I I will be hard pat or hard pressed to think that would ever happen again in my lifetime. Like I don't I don't think I'm ever gonna see that again. So that was it that was the same. His hands his go up all the time. His hands go up. Yeah, exactly. His scorecard looked very similar. His hands go up exactly the same way. I am a little surprised. The high that fives are almost timed the same. They're just a little off. You would think the second one would be like, oh, maybe not. Maybe it's like, oh, yeah, like I'm used to this. I would think initially, like maybe like it's more over exaggerated, the celebration. But yeah. maybe it's like, oh, I just did this yesterday. This isn't that big of a deal. I don't know. It's so crazy. Um, while we wait for Ben to get in here, Eagle is coming back, I believe. Music City Open this week. Uh, it got posted that he will be playing in the practice day. So I guess it's the disc golf pro tour charges people to come out and watch a certain, you know, four players practice. And I think he's playing in that. So I think he's playing in this tournament. Yeah. Is that- he said, yeah, or his name's on the list. And so that's what in. I've heard it. Uh, what do you, what do you, what are we expecting out of it? Uh, out of Eagle this week? I hope everything, honestly, you want to see a shredder. I want to see him just come out and dominate. That would be cool. Mark Myers. Thanks for the four ninety nine. He says the answer is shorter, more technical. You can throw 700 feet, but can you, uh, lay consistently, la- consistently lace a 350 foot, 400 line and make 40 foot putts. That's the winner. All right. And speak of someone that can throw very, very far and makes it look very effortless. Effortlessly. We have Ben Callaway joining tour life for the first time. Ben, what's up, brother? Welcome in. Oh no. Anticipation's killing me. Oh, here we go. Hey, hey, there he is. Ben, what's going on, man? Glad you were able to jump on here. Uh, just a, some like slight miscommunications, and we were making some dinner, and I just, yeah, we were just, uh, yeah. That's, All good. That's on me. All good. No worries. Well, we'll jump into it real quick because we, we don't have too much time, unfortunately, but we'll jump into it real quick. Um, what is it with Jonesboro? What is it about that course that – you just seem to end up always putting yourself towards the top. There's back to back years finishing in second place there. Do you, can you put your finger on anything? Uh, I would have to say just the course itself, the, the, the distances and the, the placements that you need to put yourself into score uh, just really suit my game very well. Um, the, and plus the, some of the disc selections that I make, you know, with uh, the headwind conditions, because it's it always seems like every hole you play, it's always a headwind. And mm-hmm. a lot of the discs that I choose seem to favor a lot of the holes that um, some guys just don't really play that well. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, we talk about Calvin's distance, AB's distance. Your name doesn't really ever get thrown in there, and it probably should. Like, you, you throw the disc really far. And I don't, I don't think a lot of people know that. I mean, I've been around for a long time and the the level of distance that those guys have, I, I feel like they are on a, another level. Like I, mm-hmm. I sometimes feel like I can hang, but to do it on the consistency that they do, like sometimes I, I look at what AB and Calvin do and I'm like, dang, like they throw far, but you're right. I, I do. I do throw far. I, I feel like my distance should be respected, but in no way, shape, or form do I feel like I should be like on the same. Well, level. AB's like on a different atmosphere. A- yeah, he's level. Yeah, we. I, the only person that I've ever seen in person, uh, the only yeah, the only guy I've, I've seen in person have his speed is David Wiggins. That's that's, and he doesn't really tour. So there's not really anyone on tour that's got the speed that AB does. No, not right now. Well, yeah, not on tour. I mean, I've seen I've seen some some guys that that can rip there's a there's a, a guy from europe uh his name's rossimus um i'm gonna oh yes he he does he does rip yeah you're right i rips a disc so hard um far forehand and backhand and he's he's pretty close to the 
a B conversation. Yeah. It's, it's different though, because I feel like honestly, when I watch Ben throw compared to even Anthony, Anthony has this down tempo that he's doing that is just incredible right now with the control, but Ben's effortless power yeah. is beautiful to watch. Like on coverage this, this season, for example, we went to, uh, we watched the uh, old hole one. Um, what is it? Third 11 now hole 11. And the way that you throw that is just like poetic. It's just like, and I'm like, is that getting there? And then sure enough, it's all the mm-hmm. way down there. And so to me, it looks different. It looks like in my opinion, top five cleanest forms I've ever seen ever is Ben Calloway as far as, as far as backhand goes. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good one. If you're looking at you know, who should I mimic off of, definitely, definitely yes. watch his throws in slow mo. All right, let's jump to some. No, but, of- but I, I think that could have hurt them because then they go out and they try to throw it like two percent, oh, and no. it goes like, you know, two hundred thirty feet. Oh, yeah. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> before we, before we move on, Paul, you, you say that it's like the smoothest form, dude. I feel like I'm trying to rip that thing. Like, so, yeah. Like I, I, I kind of sometimes want it to to look like I'm trying to rip the disc, but even when I try to like rip it, <laughs> apparently it just looks, you know, so poetic and, and but it still goes far. So you have that going for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is. It is very frustrating when I take like Kelsey out and I'm like, okay, what you're doing right now, I want you to rotate. I want you to do everything quicker. And she's like, okay. And then she does it. And I'm like, you look so slow. You look <laughs> like you're not doing anything. <laughs> Uh, but you you get the distance, so I don't know. I don't if you if you can somehow figure out how to make it look like you're throwing hard. I I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We want to see that. That might be that might be serious distance. I've been trying for 15 years. I, I, <laughs> um, all right, so let's jump into this final round. We're gonna actually fast forward straight into hole 11. Um, right. What is your take? You know, we saw Gannon post something, I think it was a response in one of the Facebook forums where someone was basically saying like, Hey, maybe it's at the baskets. Maybe it's the player. And he's like, listen, I know I putt hard, but also these baskets suck. So like, what, what is your take on these baskets? Cause that putt that you had on seven uh, or on a whole 11 guys, it was, if you didn't see it, it was like seven feet away. And it's one that we were on here when was that Yuli? It was, um, wh- whose putt was that? Where it was like, they went up high and it kind of like swung in and came back and they like jammed it in there. And we were talking about how like, that's kind of on them. That wasn't the case here. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a fast putt. Wh- what's your take on the baskets here, Ben? Do we have a basket problem? Um, I don't have the answer as far as like what a good basket would be. Uh, these, these, I don't feel like are the answer. The chains are definitely pretty light. Um, for, for me, as far as w- when the, when the putt came out, like it was a big shock, but that's just a part of the game. You know, I've been, Paul can attest to this. We've been playing disc golf for so many years. We've been playing, we've played on Mach ones and Mach threes where that was just the custom. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel like you have to adjust, but in those conditions with that wind, I mean, there's, I don't even know if that would have stuck on an, a Mach X, you know, it's just, sometimes the disc just does some funny things funky things with the wind and it was just really unfortunate. Uh, but when it happened, I was in shock. Uh, but to be honest, it didn't even really bother me. Like when it happened, I was just like, all right, let's just move on, <laughs> go to the next hole. I, I didn't do anything. Were you, were you aware of like where you were right there? Like if you, did you know that if that putt goes in yet, you have a two shot lead with seven yeah. holes to play? Yeah. I knew exactly where I was uh, right before I threw that shot. Um, I was checking scores and I was like, you know, I could, pr- I might be able to, you know, gain some momentum on this back nine. You know, I, I feel very confident in this stretch. And when I threw that shot, I was like, that's so good. Mm. And all right, well, here comes a stroke. Like, obviously you're thinking you're got a stroke. I threw it into the bullseye. Of course. Yeah. So when that happened, I was like, okay, well just, I, there's nothing I could do. Just shake it off and move on to the next hole. Um, a lot of people have actually been commenting about that and like blowing it way out of proportion. I feel like, because it doesn't, it didn't bother me in the moment. It really didn't like it. It sucked. But I just, one thing that a lot of people don't understand is like those next three holes, uh, 12, 13 and 14 
I was only one down for the tournament going into them. Those and are hard holes. Those are hard birdie holes. They're very hard birdie holes, uh, especially in those conditions. So mm-hmm. the fact that I, you know, buckled down after that spit out and then went birdie, birdie, birdie. I'm like, yeah, it, it didn't even phase me, honestly. Unfortunately, in disc golf right now, we do have a lot of people that kind of talk about disc golf, but don't actually watch disc golf or know what they're talking about. So uh, I can see how that could sometimes be frustrating when people are saying like, oh, well, he missed that putt. And like, that's why he played bad the last the next three holes. It's like, well, those holes are kind of tough to get anyways. Right. So let's, let, let's jump here. I know this is something that Yuli definitely wants to discuss. The decision to lay up on hole 14. You, it looked like from the camera angle, it looked like 40 feet, maybe 45 feet. Yeah, roughly something like that. W- what was, what was the idea there? What was going, what, what was the reasoning behind that? Uh, my, my whole reasoning was I, I had a two stroke lead at that point. I, I checked scores and I was two strokes ahead. And so I was thinking in my brain, you know, I haven't had the best of luck with rollaways and the, the putt was the putt was long. It was a pretty strong right to left win, and I mm-hmm. I actually just switched to the Kratos before this event started, so I'm actually still learning the disc from like Circle Two. Circle One's pretty easy, but Circle Two has been a bit of a struggle for me because it's way more stable than the disc that I used to putt with, which uh, which was the Roach, mm-hmm. with a very straight putter. So in a tailwind, I'm like just you know just rifle it; it'll go in the basket, but. With the Kratos, it's it has a lot more glide and a lot more stability in the flight. So I didn't really feel that comfortable. But as soon as I landed on the island, I made the decision of I'm just laying up for birdie because I felt very confident going into the next stretch of holes that, you know, I, I can probably birdie like these next three or four and have a good chance at winning if at the worst tie for the lead. Yeah, I mean, it, that does make sense and where you have to have those guys play super and ultra aggressive to come and catch you if you end up playing uh, right. those last several holes, uh, like you kind of mentioned. Now, obviously, you go on to miss the putt on hole 15, but then, and this is where I think the people that were like, oh, he missed that short putt, this is where they just don't really understand because if that was the case, missing that putt on hole 15, you don't make the putt on hole 16. You don't right. make the putt on hole 17. Right. And you, you cash both of those in um, a little of, of an unlucky break. I would say maybe on 17, you know, like if that hits a little bit of like some thick grass there, maybe it stays in bounds. Um, any thoughts on 18 to lay up Would, did that ever cross your mind of like, no, the, 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 the thought of laying up on 18 never crossed my mind. Cause I, in my brain, I'm thinking a B and Calvin, they're going to birdie 16, 17, 18. Like they're just too mm-hmm. good of players. They've been, they've been playing those holes so well. I got to play with Calvin the second round and he, you know, he was filleting 16 and 17. He had a little bit of struggles on 18, but I knew that a B was just going to come in with, uh, especially with that putt that I, that he made on uh, 14 mm-hmm. huge momentum swing. So I knew that he was going to be coming in with just everything that he has to finish out the event. So I, in my brain, I'm like birdie or, you know, second place. Hmm. I was going to say, size. are we good by right now? Oh, everything's fine. We're, we're live. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was just making sure. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I, I think. I think with how AB was playing that final hole, I think that definitely probably elevated the pressure, right? To force your hand there a little bit. And that's where it's like, man, if you would have, if you would have changed up how uh, a couple of those putts go earlier on, then you almost play that hole for par because right. you force them to have to like make it right. And, and and that's actually one thing that I wanted to say as well. Like if I made the putt on 15, and if I put, you know, had birdied 15, 16, 17, mm-hmm. I, I probably would have thought about laying up. Cause then I think maybe would have had to finish birdie, 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 just to tie me, I think, mm. or, or, uh, I, I think it was, I would have been 25 down. Uh, I don't think yeah. he could have caught, I don't think he could have caught you. Yeah. No. I, been able to, I, I couldn't, I, I yeah. can't remember at this time. 
Yeah, if you would have if you would have made that the seven footer, made the putt on the island hole, and then maybe got one more birdie and didn't bogey the final hole, I think you win by one or two. Gotcha. Okay, that makes yeah, more, that makes more sense. Though. So I do have a question though, going kind of back to uh, the layup on the par five, because mm-hmm. now I, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, but looking back at it now you get into the same position. Are you going to make that decision to lay that up or because my, my thoughts are like this, like I cover every single lead card that there's ever been for the last however many years. So I see these things play out yeah. and I see how aggressive everybody is. You know, you watch a B right after you lay that up, he runs it. He's in a position where he has to obviously, right. but I also think that he runs it even if, he's in a battle and he has the big lead or something or a two stroke lead. And there's somebody chasing. I still think that those guys run that putt because of how aggressive these players are. You cannot count in my opinion on people missing holes because you have three guys. I would think in my mind, one of these guys is getting all of them. One of them's playing six under for the last five holes. So that's what I kind of have to do. And, so, Hind, is there is there what do you take away from from these things that occurred, like the the layup and then the miss putt and then unfortunate thing on eighteen and, and all that stuff? Like, what you're going to get into that position again? What has Ben Callaway going to do differently in those situations? Is it a mindset or is it just like, no, I'm going to do my thing and get in those positions and roll? Well, to be, I mean, to be honest, I don't really think I. I would probably, I probably would make the same decision. I mean, I had all the momentum yeah. for me. And like I said, if, if I had, I mean, I obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. If I had made the put on 15, I birdie 16 and I did have an unfortunate, like little kick, you know, maybe a little skip on 17. I mean, what would I have been like 26 down or something like that? Mm-hmm. Uh, then yeah, I would lay up on 18. I, I don't, I felt very confident and just in the moment on every single shot and it was it was actually a very surreal time for for my disc golf career but i don't i don't think i would have changed anything different about that final round except the only one that sticks out is hole 18 that's the only one i would have changed by by laying up you're saying yeah well uh no i probably would have went up the gut with up my, the middle i probably would have went up the gut with the nuke os rather than trying to go with the hyzer because the decision on that was I, I practiced the Heiser a lot in practice and it was uh, my go-to shot, but that Nuke OS that I was throwing that day was just, it was so clutch in so many moments and so many uh, opportunities. Dude, old hole one is what the, the, like that shot. Yeah. Mm. I threw it. I threw it on so many different. Uh, I threw it on so many shots on that back nine that, you know, got me so many opportunities to, to gain birdie. So but I went against, I went again, not that I didn't really go against it. I just, I went with what I thought was the right decision. And ultimately it just wasn't. Yeah. No, How were you a- feeling on that drives? Were the nerves up? Cause obviously you're in a position, you birdie, you're almost guaranteed playoff at worst. Like, where was that? Did that have an effect on your shot or were you still very in the moment? Cause a lot of things happen kind of down the stretch that could really get into your mind and be like, why does this happen to me? You know, like, why are these things happening to me? So you, you're talking about an 18, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I felt very in the moment with it. I think what okay. happened was because I was leaning so much on that nuke OS, I was throwing a lot flatter shots. Like I wasn't throwing as much high. I was throwing very flat and uh, like my body was probably maybe used to that. So then when I stepped up with a completely different disc um, on hole 18, I tried to throw like a high hyzer which, you know, we should be able to do. We're professional athletes. We know how to throw every angles, but sometimes you have miscues. And I think my body just didn't, <laughs> my body didn't do what I wanted it to happen in my mind. And I just threw it too flat, which, which is exactly how yeah. I was to go S all day long. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think that like looking back on it, I think that is ultimately what happened because if you look at the shot, it, it looked exactly like how I was throwing that nuke OS on the uh, previous holes all day so but ultimately you know i don't know if i i mean that's like the only thing that sticks out to me that that i would have changed i don't i don't think i would have done much of anything different during the round i thought i played 
exactly the way how I envisioned myself playing on that final day. Yeah, it was a fun round. And I think a lot of people watching and maybe, you know, tuning into disc golf for the first time, whatever, and seeing you kind of on coverage there, I think they enjoyed watching you play you. Your game is fun to watch. There are some people where you're kind of like "Ah, a little snooze fest, but uh, it's definitely fun to watch (laughs) you up there. So uh, I think a lot of us are rooting for you to kind of continue uh, this onward trend of, of putting yourself in contention. But before we let you go, I've had multiple people ask me to uh, get this from you before you leave. I've heard that you do a really good Calvin impersonation. Oh. We and we just had Calvin on, so before we before we let you go, let's 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 hear your Calvin impersonation here. <clears throat> All right, hold on. I got to get into character. <laughs> hold on. Let me get into character, Calvin character here. <laughs> it's not, I got really long hair, so it's not exactly like him. <clears throat> Um, I mean, I didn't win Jonesboro, but you know, that's okay. Uh, second's pretty good, but you know, win some, lose some, but um, I just didn't play the the greatest final round. Um, but that's okay. Uh, I'm still a three time champ, so. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really good. Wow. That when did you, when you know you could do that? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need, I need to see an Instagram, uh, reel of you, uh, uh, you and Calvin talking to each other. That's, I need to see a conversation. I, I, I talked to him about it. I'm like, we should, we should do this. And he's like, yeah, just let me know. And I, uh, uh. Uh, I also, <laughs> I've also told him that if he ever needs a stand in for any of his interviews, you know, I'm available. Oh my gosh. That would be incredible. <laughs> that would be incredible. Well, you like, have to do that. You and it's just me. Yeah. Wig. <laughs> that was really, I didn't know what to expect. That was really good. So that was awesome. But, um, uh, anything to shout out, Ben, before we let you go? Any uh, discs or anything like that that's th- through the pipeline? Uh, yeah, actually, if my if I don't know if my wife and daughter are watching, but I'd like to give a shout out to them, uh, Sarah and Ruby. I love you guys. Uh, thank you for all the support that you give me. Uh, shout out to my sponsors: Discraft, Ledgestone, Rip Equipment, Culture Shock Barbershop. If anybody would like to purchase any of my uh, discs from Ledgestone, you can go to shop and uh, type in Ben Calloway. There's plenty of merchandise on there. Um, otherwise, if you want to follow me on Instagram with my endeavors on disc golf, you can go follow me there at Benjamin Calloway DG. And also, you know, shout out to you guys for having me on. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. And make sure you follow Ben on Instagram right now, guys, because that's where the skit, the Calvin meets Calvin skits coming on his Instagram. So oh, yeah. give that, give that a follow, but uh, yeah. Ben, thank you. That was fun, brother. And uh, are you playing? Are you playing this week? Are you doing the Nashville? Yeah, we're here in Nashville right now. I'm here with all the Finns. Uh, nice. So it's a full house, but yeah, it's it's yeah, we're looking forward to it. Nice. Well, good luck out there, and uh, yeah, I'll probably see you up in uh, Peoria. Sounds good. Thank you. All much. right, take it easy, brother. Yeah. There you have it. Ben Callaway coming off of his second place finish out at Jonesboro Open, back to back second place finishes there, Yuli. That's wild. Good. He loves he's that good, course. Man. He loves that course too. Yep. Yeah. No, I mean, he's had finish. He's had good finishes at other tournaments too. It's not just that, but it's like, there is something about like, he steps on that course and yeah. he's like, I'm going to compete to win this week. Yeah. That's a good feeling to have. Uh, talk about a good feeling to have. How about winning three of the first five events? Yuli, we've got the man himself. He's joining back. I made a joke saying we might just have to make him a co-host at this point. Uh, Anthony Barella joins tour life once again, coming off of his third victory this year. Absolutely insane. I think he's coming. I don't know what's going on tonight, guys. I hyped it up. I might've, I might've did the thing where you like overhype and under deliver. I kind of did that. Yeah. I should have been like, ah, tonight's show is not going to be that great. Not right, that cool. Yeah. We might be really... able to get these guys in. Maybe. It, 
maybe youtube's doing something really weird right now where we went from like having a thousand people watching to where we have 20 people watching so i think that number is super wrong but i think we now have the champ i think he now is here silas yes hello there he is ab what's up man welcome back what up How's i don't it going? know I don't know if you heard us. I said uh, I was I was thinking I might have to change the the bio of this show to uh, Brody, Yuli, and AB with how much you're going to be on it right now. You're <laughs> Hopefully, like a, we can keep it working every week. You're like you're like a co-host. So I, I got to first start off. Are you are you like? Have you, do you understand how crazy of a season you're having right now? Um, yeah, when people were throwing these stats at me, it's like I'm in like a boat with like only three other people have ever won first, or I think it was four other people have won three out of the first five. It's just, it doesn't feel like it's really happening. It's just crazy how it's all falling into place. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to act like the, uh, that woman that basically said like Caitlin Clark's scoring record doesn't count because the way she played basketball is like different than the way Caitlin's playing. But, I am going to say like what you're doing. <clears throat> I know other players have done it. Winning three of the first five events this year. It's it's not the same as winning three of the first five events three years ago. It's not the same as winning them five years ago, seven years. The amount of people you have to beat now is so much higher. And so like, to me, this is, I think, and Yuli, I would love for you to jump in. I think this is the best start of anyone's season ever. <laughs> Um, to my recollection, yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember somebody I'm here. Just going off here, of like the difficulty of it. Well, here's what I want to throw in there as well. It's different for these guys who have had winning seasons before. And then they, they practice in the off season. They come in the form, they know how to win. They've done it before. And then they win the three out of the five. Like, I get that. You're talking about the climos and the Rickies. Uh, I think Barry was in there maybe for the two of the five. Um, Macbeth, of course, but I've never seen somebody come onto the scene and then just all of a sudden win. <laughs> and then that's just what he does. He you know what I mean? And, and he likes it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the closest thing that I've ever seen to that is when Will Schusterick, his first win ever was the United States disc golf championship. Oh, wow. And then he went on to become the number one player in the world. Um, I think the next year, and that's the closest thing I've ever seen. But even Will wasn't, I don't think he was winning the, at this pace. You know, like you made the reference of Scotty Scheffler after he won the Phoenix Open, all of a sudden now he's the guy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a great reference because I've never seen this before in our, in our game. Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you think about AB? Obviously last year, right? You got so close so many times. The European Open, you came on here. We talked about that. There's so many instances where you're like, oh, man, he's just right there. He's going to break through. He's going to break through. You finally come out and you win the very first event of this year. And the narrative all of a sudden is no longer like, does he know how to win? Can he win? The narrative becomes, okay, was that a fluke? Can he do yeah. it again? And now you've won three of the five. So now that is no longer the narrative. No one's thinking it's a fluke. And now the field goal has been pushed to being... Can he win a major? What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's happening so fast. It's like, it's hard to like stay in the moment and then reflect really. But jumping into the major talk, it's like, I don't know. I could get 90th in every tournament, but I just really want to win the European Open. Like that's number mm -hmm. one on my list. <laughs> yeah. Because like now, yeah, now you are, you it's, the, it's it's crazy to say you're a three-time champ because I know. It, a lot of people, it takes them so long, like kind of what Yuli was saying, like it takes them so long to add up. And, you know, you look at someone like Calvin who has been this like absolute monster of a, of a disc golfer these past couple of years. And I think he won three, I think last year, right? I think that was his total wins, I believe last year. And you've done it in five events. And so now you're going to have that, added pressure and do you like having that added pressure now going into these majors where before it was kind of like we just want to see ab win and like yeah. no one's really expecting that to happen at a major but now you are the odds out favorite 100 going into champions cup do you like having that pressure next to your name 
Um, I do like it, honestly. It's just like people saying that I should be winning these tournaments is just like a huge confidence boost to me also. And just like going through and being like, okay, like right now I'm the number one ranked player in the power rankings. So it's just like a, it's just crazy how the mindset can switch after just one of these wins and just completely change me as a person. Yeah. Um, well, you know, what comes with winning is new fans, right? Like people are drawn to winners and you know, that is what's happening. You probably have had a bunch of new fans over these last couple months. Right. But the question is like, who's been your ride or die, right? Who, who is in your corner for these last couple years being like, no, AB's my guy. Even when you're like, you know, getting down to the wire, not able to do it. Do you know who your number one fan is? Uh, is it Trevor? <laughs> Oh, there he is. Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> hey, you know, I heard Anthony was going to be on the show tonight, and I actually slipped our producer, Silas, 20 bucks, and he said he would let me on to ask a question. So I figured, you know, now's as good a time as any. Uh, I've got a question um, for you, Mr. Barella. Yeah. I've got a disc here. You know, I've thrown a lot of discs in my life, uh, especially Rocks, uh, the very beloved mid range. And I've got one here that was in my bag for, I don't know, four or five years, maybe. It's quite old. And I've, I'm just wondering if, if you know about this disc, if you've seen this disc. This is right here is a, um, everybody, I hope you're, hope you're sitting down. This is quite beautiful. This is a Barella oh, yeah. uh, 2015 rock right <laughs> here uh, to commemorate his Am Worlds and U.S. Amateur titles in the same season, okay? I got this disc. I'm pretty sure somehow from John Tompkins, I don't really know exactly how it ended up in my hand, but it's been in my bag for many of years. Uh, and my question is, so I've had this one in my bag for many years and it, it got beat in a little too much. It was my bread and butter. Anybody would tell you it's the disc I love the most. So my question is, do you have any of them? Uh, that's the first part of the question. And if so, what is your price? Um, I don't personally have any of them, but my dad, I know my dad and my grandpa have, like oh. at least 10 or 20 of them. Oh. And they, they have that stamp on a Thunderbird, a Destroyer, and uh, that rock. Do not care about the other two molds, but I do want the rock. <laughs> um, <laughs> listen, you can tell them. You can tell them firsthand. I, Worlds this year is in my backyard. It's in Virginia. If you bring one down or across or wherever you might be yeah. at that point, <laughs> I would – I'd. Uh, it could fetch a pretty penny for him. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very needed in my bag. And um, yeah, well, I'm glad yeah. to hear there's some in circulation because I thought they might be extinct. Yeah, I can get you one, but you just got a caddy for me in exchange for one of oh. those. Okay, well, listen to this. So here's the thing. I sent you, I messaged you because I was like, it would be so fun to caddy uh, at Worlds because like you'll be here in Lynchburg. And I was like, that'd be yeah. so much fun. And then you started winning every single event with cupcake on your back. And I'm like, I've got to rescind the offer. Like I, I can't break this up. Like what's no, going to happen. I didn't have cupcake on the bag at chess.com. So okay. That makes not, me feel better. Yeah. It's not, it's not like he's the, the deciding factor if I win or not, but he definitely helps me out. Great. That, right. Did he sleep through his alarm at that one? <laughs> no. He, yeah. He forgot. He missed his plane flight and didn't make it. All right. Oh. Well, all right. Well, I'll be there at Worlds. I'll get a Diamondbacks hat if that's what I got to do, and yep. we'll be set. Yep. Awesome. You know it. I'll see you there. All right. All see right. you, boys. Later, Trevor. All see right. There's there. there's number one AB fan, Trevor Staub. There. Awesome. Uh, I don't. That wasn't his. Uh, that wasn't his tour life de debut. But it's always nice to have Trevor bounce on. All right. Let's let's talk some disc golf. Let's let's bounce into this final round because this final round was uh, kind of crazy. You know, it's definitely unlike your other two wins. So you start off this final round with a lot of loose tee shots. Hole two, loose tee shot. Hole three, yeah. loose tee shot. Hole four, loose tee shot. Your second shot on hole four. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if people realize how, <laughs> how insane that shot is. If you throw a good drive, on that shot on, on hole four, 
like your second shot is like really hard still to even get to the basket. You yeah. got like maybe a hundred feet off. You're at the bottom of the hill. You've got this low limb trees in your, in your way. And you somehow get yourself a putt. Was that shot? Did like, you just like whipping, I'm, I'm assuming you threw that as hard as you could or roughly as hard as you could. Yeah. Somewhere up there. 80%. Do you, do you think that kind of like almost like shocked you into like waking up? Cause after that you start playing really well. Yeah. I don't, I was just like so mad that I missed that. Yeah. Like off the tee that I was just like, all right, I'm just going to, I know I can reach this. Cause I saw that 500 foot stake. And I was like, well, I've done 500 feet before I, I can do it again. And then I thought it was going to be closer, but I guess I just got hung up in those trees. I thought I threw it perfect from down there, but that shot definitely gave me a little bit of momentum, but still after that roll away on six, it kind of just like stalled out again. And it's just tough to get things going in that wind. Yeah. Cause you threw, you threw a great shot on hole five, uh, which is, which is a pretty challenging hole. Yeah. And then we're going to f- uh, fast forward a little bit here to hole 12. To me, this was the biggest difference between old AB and new AB old AB three putts that hole and yeah. you're out, you're done. Mm-hmm. Your, your tournament's over. You're done. Yeah. Did, did that thought ever like, did you, did you have to fight anything that like, what w- was there a difference there that you, that you could tell was happening? Um, after I missed that putt for par, I, I thought like it was over. I didn't think that there were enough holes left for me to birdie out. So that drive on the next hole was just like, kind of like a, I don't know. I wasn't really thinking. I just kind of like threw it, whatever. And then got mm-hmm. up there to a putt. And then after my drive on hole 14, I looked at the scores and I think Gannon or I think Ben parred or something on hole 14, one of the guys in the lead parred the hole. And I was like, wow, if I can eagle this hole, I can pick up two here and then maybe get one on Calvin. And then after I hit that putt on 14, I was like, okay, I just, I got it. I can birdie out and at least push to a playoff. But um, yeah, it was a lot of checking the scores. And I knew I just had to keep pace with Calvin that because it was just going to come down to us two, I felt like in the end. Yeah, because I even think. I, I even think you in the past, like the putt that you had on hole 13, like the next hole, that wasn't a gimme putt. And I, yeah. I see that being like past AB. I'm thinking this is a coin flip. Like he yeah, might I'm make yanking, this. I'm team. yanking that right and roll out of bounds for sure. Yeah. yeah. And you just drain it dead center here. And you're just, you know, you, you, and Yuli, if you want to jump in, I don't know if it's maturing. I don't know if it's growth or whatever, but just watching it. Cause I've had the pleasure of being able to watch you a couple times, uh, you know, playing with you in the first round of tournaments or whatnot. And I've seen like your skill level was so high. And then like you would make a mistake or so, and then you'd kind of just be out of it. Like, I don't see that anymore. Right. It's like, that's, and it's kind of scary for everyone now (laughs) that that's, that's not happening anymore. You, you want to jump in? Oh, you're muted. Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. I think one of the things that I, that I've seen that has really changed with Anthony is his demeanor on the course as well. It doesn't mm-hmm. look panicked. It doesn't look rushed. And when somebody has that type of pace <clears throat> to their game, I feel like you're staying in the moment kind of deal, you know, and, and you're not getting too far ahead of yourself. Of course, thoughts go through your head and things are happening. And, and like he, he said, yeah, I thought it was over but then I make the putt on, on 14. I'm with you on past a B would miss those putts. But I also think that past a B would be kind of moving ahead with his thought process of, Oh my gosh, here's my chance. And then the the moment's a little big Mm. and, and with the wins and you can interrupt at any time, maybe and be like, no, that's not, that's not true at all. But I feel like analyzing the situation knowing that he's done it before, like staying in the moment, like he's able to slow down and the, the result doesn't matter because that monkey's off his back from winning all, you know, already. Yeah, that definitely is like a thought that goes through my mind. It's like, I've done this. I've already won this year. Like I can choke away every tournament for the rest of the year. And just like, I'm, I'm still a winner though. Nobody can take that away from me. So 
yeah, it was just like, I do this like new thing where I'm just telling myself like these nerves you're feeling like you live for this. You've been preparing your whole life to feel these nerves and just, those feelings are good. And now I've just found a way to capitalize on those nerves. And it's just been a pinnacle for me in my game. Yeah. So when you step up to the par five hole 14, you kind of, you address this a little bit, but I want to dive in a little bit more. You're thinking, okay, if I eagle this hole and essentially birdie out, I have a shot, right? Like that's like, that's your thought process of like with where everyone's at, you're kind of looking at where Ben is. You're not at this, at this moment, Ben hasn't missed the putts. Ben hasn't gone OB on 18. Right. And so you're kind of thinking like for me to catch Ben, I have to play almost perfect throughout the last stretch of holes. So you end up playing hole 14 perfectly. You make that big Eagle putt. You're probably feeling like, all right, I've got a shot. How tight did you clinch your cheeks on hole 15? <laughs> um, I definitely threw it a little lower than I wanted. And it got that, it got like a weird wind bounce. And I was like, I don't know, but I was pretty confident that I was going over. Like it, that Luna has so much glide. And like, if I'm gonna leave it short on a 260 foot hole, and yeah, I, it was it didn't even cross my mind that I could leave it short there. So okay, I'm just glad it didn't get a crazier wind bounce, but that was a little scary. It might have looked worse from because uh, I watched Jomez of that. I think I actually even watched live of that part. I think that's when I started. I thought it was in. Donzo. It got that that I, little yeah, drop, I, and I was when like, when it got oh, the drop, I was like, that's in the water. I watched that video, and then. It, uh, Jerm was like, I don't even know how that went over. I was like, what are you talking about? I was going over the whole time. Come on. Yeah. I think the perspective just made it look like it was done like halfway yeah. out of your hand. It's like, Oh my gosh. Um, so you get it on there. You make that putt. Uh, you throw an absolutely nasty second shot on hole 17. And, yeah. and at this point you are now six under through the last five, which I don't know if anyone had at that point had done that in that tournament. I think the way you won this tournament, it it's very scary for everyone, right? And and Ben kind of even alluded it to a little bit, talking. Ben was on earlier, and he was saying on hole 18, he's like, I was like, did you have any thoughts on like laying up and playing that hole for par? And he was literally saying, like, I saw how easy A B made that hyzer look. And so in his mind, he's like, A B is gonna birdie this hole. Yeah. And so you're already starting to have this impact. And I think the first two wins that you've had this season, you were kind of like the front dog. You were kind of fighting off people and yeah. you, you're fight. You fought off Ricky. You fought off Gannon. You fought off Calvin. I mean, you fought off like top tier guys. So it's like, all right, if he's in position to win, he knows how to do that. Now we see yeah. you're out of the tournament. You, you got no shot to win this thing. And then you somehow put together these final holes. It, are you now going in to the next event and champions cup? Like, are you, is this the highest you've ever felt confidence wise? Yeah, of course. Uh, before the final round of Jonesboro at the fly mark, Gossage hit me with a stat. He's like, you know, you've been, you've had five consecutive rounds in first place on the disc golf pro tour. And I was like, wow, that's a crazy stat. And then now it's six rounds in a row. And I don't know. I just want to keep that streak going as long as I can. Yeah, that's that's a good one um, for sure. Oh, here we go. Casey says, thanks for signing my disc. And thanks to Yuli for taking a photo with my buddy at Oaks yesterday. My buddy lost his brother last year, and I haven't seen him that excited in a while. Best of luck at MCO. Aww. So there you guys go. Nice. You guys making impacts on people's lives out there. It's, it's what it's all about. It's awesome to see. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 Yuli, do you have anything else with the Jonesboro before we move on? I, I just thought that was, that was one of the more entertaining finishes I've seen in a while. That was the back and forth. So many people no, in contention. That was a cool one to, to watch. No, I think you're right about the field better be on high alert because the other thing that I'm seeing is like you said, he's taken down dragons yes. right in in the field like ricky gannon and now um calvin all pretty much all three of of the 
of the tournaments, but the other way is he's learning how to win in different ways. Mm -hmm. Like that takes time. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I won. I led the whole entire time type thing. And then he's battling with robot Yuli and he's gone. Okay. Well, (laughs) Oh, he's back. Maybe not same Wi-Fi. What's going on? (laughs) You're back now. Yep. There he is. Dang, that was going to be a smash hit right there. I was going to have you guys clip that, baby, and then it was going viral. Oh, damn it. Oh, you was heating up. I was rolling. Oh. I was rolling, oh, baby. No. Uh, but no, I, I think that he's learning how to win in different ways, which takes a lot of people a lot of time. And to do it in the first three out of the five tournaments, like now he knows, hey, if I'm behind, it doesn't matter, like, these guys know I'm coming type thing. That's a confidence level that is earned over a long period of time. We saw yep. Simon get a couple wins, but not really break through till way later on in his career. And then he had a crazy streak like this. Once he kind of got it done and he, and he won a lot of tournaments in a short amount of time. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how he handles the majors because that's a different level of pressure. And I think that's the next level that he's got to get to. But at, but at the same time, he's so young. You know what I mean? I'm so excited for the future with him and Gannon and the battles that we're going to see. And the old guard not wanting to, to guarantee Ricky's out putting right now. You know what I mean? And, and Calvin's thinking about these things. Calvin's kind of in that middle, middle gap of old and new, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Gannon doesn't like it, but the old guard's going to not be happy about it. You know what I mean? And they're going to want to take these young guys down. So I'm just excited about the future and, it, and it's bright. Yeah. I'll give you a little preview for uh, debate night that comes out on Thursday, right here on foundation podcast, YouTube channel. Uh, I was battling to, you know, these guys are telling me that, you know, Oh, like when you get old, like you, you just get really bad at disc golf. And I was like, these guys are like 28 years old. They're like, that's like, <laughs> I'm like, you think AB is going to be bad at disc golf when he's 28? Like, I don't think so. Who's that? That's that, Brad. I don't know. That Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Try to come on the podcast. He wants that. He wants that invite. He's waiting for Yuli to invite him eventually. Um, okay. Here's a good, here's a good one for UAB. Who, who is the one guy that you haven't yet, right? You, you've, you've gone with Calvin Gannon. Um, uh, Yuli. Ricky, Ricky, yeah, I'll yeah. throw Yuli on there. It doesn't really count, <laughs> but you can throw Yuli on there. Uh, Simon, you, you've had a decent crew of people that you've battled down the stretch. Who's someone that you haven't battled down the stretch yet that you would love to be on lead card throwing bows back and forth? Uh, it's obviously got to be Macbeth. Yeah. The guy has a unmatched aura in the sport, and I've seen him win so many tournaments. And I'm just ready for my battle to go down with him. I know it's going to happen. I know he's not done. But, yeah, I'm just super excited for that one. Yeah, if that happens at Worlds, that will be must-see TV. That is for (laughs) sure. Everyone will be tuning into that. Um, All right, before we let you go, obviously – we got, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. It's, it's, you know, you're, you're used to it at this point. Cause you got three of them. So, uh, what were we thinking here? Trophy wise, how did we like this one? It looks like it was like a wooden shaped Arkansas with a metal plaque on it. Yeah. Did we also, um, I think, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I like I like the, the state thing. Like I can connect my Texas one to that Arkansas one. It looks kind of cool. Oh no! But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I thought it was a fine trophy. It just said the men's pro open, and I yeah. saw a bunch of people talking about that. Did we change, Yuli? Do you know? Are we no longer mixed pro ultimate? Are we just men? It says men's open champion. I thought it was mixed open. Yeah, it should be mixed open, but. All right. I, know, I saw that. I, I saw that too. And I was like, what the heck? We got, we got people rating it in chat. I love it. Um, uh, also, I was talking to Brixton, AB. You're going to have so many cards. It's, it's funny. He texted me saying like, yeah, because I guess each card, they add a trophy to the card. 
And he's like, yeah, we're yeah. going to have to start making his trophies smaller because they're going to run out of space <laughs> adding the trophies to your card. So go check That's those so out cool. if you haven't. AB's got some sweet uh, champions cards now yeah, at three, of, three events. Um, anything Anything you got other stuff going on that you want to... I got one more question for him. Yeah, yeah, go, Yuli. Out of all the guys on tour, and you might have... We might have talked about this the last time you were on it on here, but who's your who's your rival that you're looking at and you're like, okay, as soon as I get in a in a battle with this guy, it's gonna be it's gonna be an absolute brawl. Who's that guy right now? Who do you hate? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, like who, who do, <laughs> most respectful of their game, really? Yeah, uh, it's got to be Gannon. I. We were talking last year. We played together more than anyone. Like, we played, like, 14 rounds, I think, together last year. And then this year, we've been having really similar s- seasons, and we we're, like, talking about it. Like, after he won Waco, I was I literally told him, I was like, I'm the only one who could take you out, Gannon. It's me. <laughs> and we are just, like, <laughs> talking back and forth like that, all jokes. But, yeah, definitely Gannon. And then uh, Parker Welks, too, one of my rivals, I think, because – he got that win on me at the Shelly Star Memorial, and that was like that one really hurt. I don't know why. And then, <laughs> yeah, but I like I like battling with Parker a lot too. They could they could work with that. The, the no one really calls Gannon GB, but you could go the GB versus AB battle. Got a nice little <laughs> yeah. ring to it. Yeah. Could you imagine if Gannon like just next year came on tour? He's like, oh, I'm going by G- GB this year. That's, that sounds like I, something he would do. I know, and I would never call him GB. <laughs> I would I would refuse to call him GB. I'd be like, that's ridiculous. I'm not calling you that. Um, uh, yeah. Before you go, AB, anything you want to shout out? Any anything down the pipeline that's happening with Discraft or any other sponsors or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we're gonna have a commemorative Big Z nuke for the Ooh. Joesboro, which is it's a six stamp. I'm so pumped Yuri, for it. Nuker. And then, yeah, shout out to all the fans for supporting me and buying the jerseys. I can't believe how many I saw. In Jonesboro last week, it's just it's amazing, and I really appreciate it for all that. Hey, don't don't forget about your number one fan. You know, don't don't forget about yeah. the people that were there with you from the beginning. Those are the yep. people that matter. Um, but there you have it, folks. AB three time champion, five tournaments, insane. People are going to wonder, can he keep it up? I guess we'll find out this week at Music City Open. You can catch him playing at the Disc Golf Network. AB, thanks for joining. It's always a pleasure, man. Yep, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate you. All right, man. Have a good night. There you have it. AB taking another one down. All right, let's uh, let's get him in here. I don't know if he's in the wings. I don't know if he's watching and, and knowing. I, I'll text him. Let's see. Um, are all our guests on tonight? All our guests on had long hair at one point. I just put that two and two together. Yeah. Because AB used to have long hair. Mm hmm. Wow. Long hair night. Have you ever had long hair? No. I had a little, like, like the, the man bun thing that everybody hated. That's about it. That's the longest I ever got. No, no one liked it on you, or no one liked it in general? I, I I I feel like anytime there's like you know like my ace video comes up from US doubles everybody's like oh no. top knot you're the worst <laughs> like that looks so stupid um so I don't think people liked it that much I liked it though it was fun that was a fun well, look. S- speaking of man bun let's bring him in here Ezra's with us now <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not at that point yet maybe in a couple months I'm not quite there. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry for uh, making you wait this long, but a, a, a five minute interview with you, I don't think would have give, given the listeners and the people at home what they really want. So uh, it glad probably, that you, honestly, it probably is. Yeah, it's true. Maybe people start. Uh, le- I thought no one really cared uh, when we had AB on because I guess YouTube was going through something weird and we had like a thousand mm. people and it went down to 17. And I was like, oh, I guess people don't really mm. want to. He's been on here way too much. So, uh, yeah, whatever. But uh, I think that was just some sort of YouTube glitch. But we are back now. Um, I thought it was I thought it was going to be it, Ezra. I mean, I'm not going to lie. 
I, I know. You texted me before, too. You said, go get one. And I was like, heck yeah. And I, I, just, yeah, I thought off. this was it. Um, yeah. I, I, guess, I guess the first question is, before we dive into and you know nitpick, because that's what we like to do here, right? We like to nitpick everyone. Oh, yeah. What what do you think it is now? You know, back to back tournaments being right there at the end. What what do you think it is that is that hurdle that you have to make it over to actually finally be standing in the winner circle? Yeah, um, well, I think it's Texas State. I just went against like two of the best tournament plays, like two guys that play like the best tournament like ever, I guess. So like, I don't know, I feel like Dan and, and Anthony just shot crazy rounds at that event. So I feel like I played good enough at that tournament to win almost any other event if those two guys hadn't obviously popped off. Like, I feel like if I played the way I played Texas States, I think I would have actually won this event. Um, and then this, for this event, you know, honestly, I made some I made some questionable decisions in the first round, and my execution wasn't that great in the first round of this event. And then, other than that, like the second round and the third round, I felt like were pretty solid. I was aggressive when I felt like I needed to be. Um, so I think I'm I think I'm in the right direction. I'm on pace. Um, it just hasn't happened yet. Some people are saying Judah might be the missing piece. She's Is that rich. he's he's about I think he's maybe an hour away right now. He's on his way. Oh. To, Boy. To come to Nashville, so yeah, so you might you might be able to help out a little bit. Uh, we can't gamble in uh, disc golf just yet, soon. Uh, but if we yep. could, I would be throwing all my chips in on Ezra this week with Judah on the bag. Um, Heck yeah. Uh, what are what are some things that have that you've been working on to like complete your game out, like to to make you more of a complete game, uh, complete complete player? Because watching your game this year. It seems like you have all the shots. So like, what were things that you were working on this off season to get you to where you are now? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm kind of always working on kind of most everything. And then I kind of just shift the focus a little bit. This off season, I, I focused a lot more on the circle two putting than I did last season. Um, my circle one putting was fantastic last year, but my circle two putting lacked a little bit where the year prior, it was actually really good. So I've been putting more time into the circle two putting, and that's helped a lot for this season. And then also just hitting different angles. Um, I've kind of been known as just a, a Heisel guy, just kind of a one angle, Heisel flip shots, power Heisel shots. And I've been throwing a lot more oval stable stuff, either flat or even on Annie. And so I'm not really, I'm not as, as skilled to throw an Heisel shots. I think that's helped a lot, especially when it gets windy out. It's so beneficial to be able to rip something super oval stable on Annie and know that it's just going to find the way it kind of always does. Um, so that kind of dependability has been a huge help for my game, especially in the last couple of events while it's been so windy. Yeah, it was, uh, it was tough. I would say because me and Kelsey were watching the masters, the master masters ends lead card is like on hole 15 or so. So me and her are both watching like the end stretch and you get to 18 and I'm like, watch this. His circle two putts fire. He's going to make this. And then it's like, no, yeah. why did that just come yeah, out of your hands? Like a little that. weird. It, it just, yeah, it just came out soft, man. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't quite get the pop on that putt that I'm looking for. Um, I don't know. My circle putt, my circle two putt wasn't really that great that day at all. I had quite a few looks. I think I was, Maybe like two for nine. I had a really nice putt on hole one, but then all of them that my circle two putt was not landing, and it was. I mean, obviously it was super windy, so it made the the circle two putt difficult. And I was pretty much running everything I had a chance at because I felt like I had to be very aggressive. Um, so I, I ran almost every. I think I ran every circle two putt that I had. Um, and it just they just went out falling, and then you know the one eighteen obviously didn't fall as well, which that would have been nice. Did you did you know that you were five hundred through six with that putt on hole seven I, there? Um, what, what are you yeah, doing there, yeah. Ezra? What are you doing? I'm learning that part, bro. I'm 100% <laughs> learning that part. I can't, okay, here's the thing. I'm, 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 thanks for having me on the podcast because I've gotten a lot of comments about people saying, like, oh, you no, says, do you're, not you're, run you're that part. <laughs> you no. say, do not run that <laughs> Bro, bro, bro. bro. Through six. Five under <laughs> through six. Yeah. Amazing pace compared to the field. So many holes left. Right. Little soft little layup, tap it in. <laughs> You're still so far ahead. No, uh, here's the thing. First of all, I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't. I wasn't taking score, so I had no idea that people were having slow rounds. Except for, I guess 
I was somewhat aware of the people on my card on, on how they were shooting, but not. I would have guessed they, they were maybe a couple under. So, I, I guess I, I thought I'd gain some strokes on them. Uh, but I had no idea about lead card, and I feel like I can't bank on the competition playing so slow, such slow rounds, you know? Like, I, I think in my position, I can't bank on Anthony and Calvin shooting, like, six down and Isaac shooting, like, even or whatever he shot. So I feel like I'd, I'd rather lose the tournament the way I lost it than lose it because I, I don't play aggressive when I have the opportunities and go back and, like, oh, man, if only I ran that putt and made it, then I would have had a chance. So I, I stick by that decision, and then, you know, there was the – We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. I just – I felt like I had to run that putt. It was only – you know, it was just outside the circle, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident in my putt right now. Obviously, the way we made that putt, almost impossible probably. Um, Ron Jones you know, says the win. I stand by the decision, just have to execution. Ron Jones just said the wind kept telling you to lay up too. Listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, did yeah, a scuba I, I did just... a scuba ever cross your mind? <laughs> nope. Not with the win. Yeah, that's good. You throw the ski yeah, bar. Coach, I'm not throwing for too much, man. I, I, I'm saying in three weeks, I forget I'm not the scuba. I. I do have a question about that putt. That would have been electric if you happened. would have busted out the scooper. <laughs> made it. I would have freaked. I would have freaked out. Oh my gosh! So, so going back to that putt, I do have a question about it because it the wind swirling. It's a tough one, obviously. Did the wind die down because it looked like you were like thinking and taking your time, and then all of a sudden you just like stepped up and just you know what happened happened. Was there a oh, lull in the wind and you were like, oh, it's time? Or were you just like, no, I'm that guy, bam? Or what? Take me um, to the thought process. Sorry. There might have been a slight lull. I mean, the part, like, I stood over that putt for way longer than uh, <laughs> I probably should have. I mean, I, I definitely went over 20 seconds, which I don't know if that's even a rule anymore. Come on, um, man. I was, I was to... Come on, man. Oh, You're part of the problem. You're part of the problem, man. <laughs> No, 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 I was I was willing to accept a warning. If, if somebody wanted to call me on it and give me a warning, I was I was fine with that. Um, I was hoping the wind was going to die down more. It never did. So I I, I saw some point you have to just you have to just putt when it's windy, and uh, yeah, maybe I should have waited two more minutes and then it would have died down for me. But <laughs> it maybe went down a little bit. But I had to just give I had to go at some point. If you would have had flags on the basket, that would have helped too. Maybe. Uh, see exactly. Yep. Yes. Flags on a basket. Um, Especially that basket. You can't even see the basket from the, from the approach shot. <laughs> All right. You know, it's like, uh, again, that's the one where they need, out, to have, like, they need to have like the 10 foot flag on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, all right. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Do you have that Go shot? Forward. Do you have that shot? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Brody. I have no idea what you're talking about. Is that like that's not a like when I think of like when I think of like okay, Ezra's top ten shots, I don't think I don't think a straddle standstill forehand from a hip through over water, right. twenty mile right. five mile per hour winds. I, I don't yeah, we'll think feeling, that. Yeah. I don't feel that is in their top ten, but maybe I'm wrong. You haven't seen um, me, you haven't seen me practice that shot. <laughs> um, so again, was that one of those things of where at that point in time had you looked at scores to see where you were? Ooh, um, I don't think I looked at scores until after that hole, actually. Oh man, maybe I did. Maybe I did. Maybe I looked after like hole ten or eleven. And I, I remember looking at the scores at some point and seeing that Anthony was having a, a pretty bad round. And he was like, you know, a few spots behind me even. So I, I had to check before that. I don't know. I think I, I, after my bogey on hole 10, um, and then I pulled hole 11, got hole 12. And then after that, I was thinking, if I have the same finish that I had on Saturday, which I went, oh, I looks like everyone's frozen. Oh. No, you no. We're we're listening oh. intently. Oh, wow. it's not, it's yeah, we're story. listening Jeez, intently okay. to what wow. you're going to say. Well, okay. Why the okay. heck okay. you okay. do a try to go a 350 foot standstill <laughs> straddle pie all the way across water? Okay, I'm speaking to the best show. Okay, uh, so I thought if I it, I went seven down to the last six holes on Saturday, and so I was thinking if I have that if I have that finishing stretch again, I probably have a chance at winning this tournament. Still, even though I thought yeah, by like out of it. three. Yeah, I. I well, I also can't know that everyone's going to, you know, not play that great. So I, I thought I had to be aggressive. So then I, then I missed, uh, I missed hole, I missed hole 14. 
And then, uh, yeah, in 14, I was just like, I can't, I'm, I'm going to lay this up. And then hopefully, you know, hopefully I shoot the next shot and get a body. Or I'm going to go for this and try to give myself an ego opportunity and uh, play aggressive and make sure I can just distance myself. I, again, I, I felt like I felt like I had to play aggressive. I, ha- I felt like I couldn't bank on anyone else messing up. And, you know, I can't, I can't bank on Ben, you know, missing the, the 15 foot on, on the next hole. I can't sure. bank on him sliding over on 17 and then going over on 18. Like, I can't, I can't think that these people are going to make these mistakes. And so I feel like I had to have the, the pedal on the floor. And uh, unfortunately, that shot was just like a fair local center shot. If I was like four feet left of where my, my T shot was, it would have been a way easier because wow. I could have actually had like a normal stance. Um, and I actually shot a little bit too well. Honestly, I think, see, I think if I would have thrown that shot a little bit higher, it would have skipped like middle of the lake instead of right <laughs> at the beginning of the lake. And then maybe would have had a chance, but maybe oh, it just no. came out low. And then, yeah, the wind, it wasn't, it was not good. What, uh, gone too. I, I like that. I like that. Oh, disc. yeah, that disc was, yeah, that disc is in the middle. Uh, what, what did Jude have to say after that? I'm sure, I'm sure he had some sort of words for you or no, he hasn't said anything. No, we talked about the phone a little bit. He, uh, he, he thinks I need to be aggressive. I mean, maybe when he, when he walks in the door, he'll, he'll just be like, what were you thinking on that shot? He's like, if I was on the bed, you know, we would have won the talk. You know, who knows what he'll actually say in Boston, but on the phone, I feel like he agreed that I had that, you know, I needed to be aggressive. It's just like the competition level this season is so insane. It's always getting better and people are playing so well. And especially like with what I saw in, in Texas state, it's like, you just, you really can't, you can't afford to just play slow. You can't afford to make mistakes, obviously, but you really can't afford to just you can't you can't afford to just not not body every single hole. It seems like sometimes. Well, what about now that you see like in those conditions? Let's say you lay up right. the putt. Let's say you lay that one up, and then all of a sudden the outcome could be completely different. Does that change your mindset moving forward? Or are you like this is just a one off? Like nobody's ever going to play this bad again. <laughs> And, or is there like yeah. something to learn from it to be like, Hey, I need to have a more of a golfer's mentality maybe and, and pick my spots a little more and believe that, you know, if I do that and execute those things that I ha- I have a better chance, or is it just, yeah. we, we got a birdie every hole. Cause I, I agree with you. Like I, I was is. talking about Ben, Ben laying up his putt and I'm like, you can't do that yeah. in that situation. In my opinion. Right. Yeah. I don't see that working with the people that are behind Ben. Um, but you we're not talking yeah, well, about a 45 foot putt here. We're talking about a straddle forehand across the water. No, I'm talking about the other putt that he ran. Like, do, you, you know what I mean? Oh, he lays that putt up because he ends up three was putting. Putt and then he good lit- at that point is it had to have been right. Like it, my, my putt's been pretty good for a while. Yeah. My putt's been, yeah. My putt's been yeah. good. I mean, I, let's see. I, I pulled the one hole, but that wasn't because I missed a putt. Okay. Um, I guess technically it was kind of a putt, but it was like 60 feet obstructed. So it wasn't really. Yeah. So you're, you're, doing you're just feeling, you're yeah. feeling yourself on that one then, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I it's hard. Like, I thought it was a situation I had to make. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot easier, obviously to be in me and Yuli's spot. Right. And be like the armchair quarterback being like, Oh, you should have done this. You should have done this. Yeah. Because one thing that doesn't get talked about that much is like when you do throw a crazy aggressive shot in it results in the birdie. Right. Like no one ever says like, holy cow, like that was so risky. Um, And we see that, we see that often from a lot of people, right. Of where it does work out. Unfortunately, this one, it didn't for you, but uh, how, how do you feel? Sorry, Yuli, did you have a question in there? I'm sorry if I cut you off. I asked it. Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I went on a tangent. Um, Sorry. Yeah. First of all, it's it's, it's just, I think it's too easy to look back. Um, with the hindsight being 2020 thing and, and knowing how everyone shoot, if I knew that that that, that, that feature call was gonna pl- shoot six under as our best round, then I think that obviously changes my game plan a little bit. Um, as far as your question, Yuli, as far as like you know playing golf, I feel like that's actually one of my biggest strengths is is managing shot selection and, and knowing when to be aggressive and knowing when to lay up and all that stuff. I really don't have a problem laying putts up typically. Now that's <laughs> That's 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 when that's you know the first two rounds kind of thing. That's the first three rounds of a four round tournament. That's okay, when I yeah. don't know what the what the outcome is. When I get to that final round and it's like I'm I'm starting out the round three behind the lead the lead card the lead OCR. Um, my my game set my game plan has to change a little bit. I think that's that's part of playing golf too, and part of strategy is being able to adjust where your plays are depending on the situation, and that mostly comes in the final you know the final round and the final moments. So I don't think I don't think my mentality on that's going to change a whole lot. 
since I think it's always, I think, I think the mentality I want to have is just taking the right shot for the situation. And it's kind of always different. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Jacob, one of our tour life members here says Ezra will go down as a great. And that leads me to my next point. You are probably now, you are probably have now put yourself in the conversation as one of the best players on tour that hasn't won yet. How does that feel? Yeah. Um, yeah, does that, I mean, like, does that I feel, feel like good? I feel like I've... Uh, no, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't really care, I guess. I, I kind of thought of myself that way anyway. Um, I, I kind of thought of myself in that spot for the last few years anyway. Joe actually asked me um, after after um, Anthony won Waco in Chess.com, um, Big Joe asked me who I thought was like the next pulse. You know, you know who, who, who hasn't won it that's like the best player. Um, we were at Waco when he asked that. And I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, maybe Aaron, um, or I was like, I think myself too. And then he was like, yeah, and then he, he, he said Nicholas, which, you know, obviously makes sense as well. Um, but I, I, I put myself in that position as well. And I think, I don't know, I, I feel like I, I feel like I deserve to be thought of that way. So it's not, it's not yeah. a surprise to me, I guess. Yeah, no, I think you're in there. And uh, our Edwin Stats actually said that uh, you led Jonesboro in strokes gained putting at 8.02 almost six strokes better than a B you also Ooh. have the 10th most you have the 10th most elite slash majors Ezra has the 10th most elite majors since 2019 without a win at 69 10th most okay so you're in the top 10 okay yeah there you have it yeah so are you uh you playing you're playing this week with Jude on the bag yeah if he wants to yeah we'll see Okay, um, but hopefully oh. he does. I, I could, I, I could also see him not wanting to like change any, mess anything up. But I, I don't know. I think he'd be more beneficial than any negative thing. So I'd, I'd love to have one. Y- Yuli asked Ezra that question that we were talking about. I'm curious to, to see what his thoughts are on it. The uh, injuries. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so I was Go thinking to about this today. Go to <laughs> I was thinking about this today. Uh, kind of reflect well, what brought it up is we we saw the post from chris dickerson and having um it was a pretty brutal brutal uh instagram post i don't know if you saw that mm-hmm. but uh basically he has like a bad hip and it's gonna need to be replaced eventually type thing oh, no. um and he had an mri and go look at it and then send him a nice message yeah. afterwards because I, I feel like he needs it right now but uh he's playing wow. but anyway that's beside the point i what jogged my what jogged this topic was I was playing today and, and I felt like the course was very sidearm heavy um into a lot mm-hmm. of the greens, like big big time and, and power sidearms. And I can't help but notice, you know, the injuries that are happening on the tour right now with, with Calvin and Eagle and even Macbeth and Drew Gibson. Um I see the course is changing and it becoming more power oriented. And when I think about like early on in my career, when there, there wasn't as many players, obviously probably touring full time, but I don't remember like a lot of injuries ever happening. Like I never remember it being like, Oh, yep. I'm done for the season. I popped my elbow or I popped my shoulder and I'm sure they happen, but not at the pace that it's kind of happening right now. And I'm wondering is, is there something that needs to be done with like, there's gotta be an answer. The pro tour has to protect their assets in some way or another. And, and whether it's like uh, with course design or, or maybe, or maybe it falls on the player for, for having to have better um, rehab after their round or warm up routines and, and goes th- through those things. But I think about like pitching, I think about football after these pro athletes are done or even on their break, cause they're getting iced up, they're getting shoulder work. You know, that's a really tough, that's really tough on your body is there something that the pro tour should do or is it on the player and are the courses really the main problem as far as these injuries, or is it just, no, these athletes are not taking good care of themselves. Oh, wow. Um, I, I don't think we can blame the courses Cause I think as far as the sport goes, we want the courses to, to play the best for the spectators and for the competition and for everything in that kind of aspect. So I think we have to, push the, the courses. Um, I don't think the pro tour should really force us to do anything as far as 
um, like body maintenance. You know, I don't, I don't know if that's still a job. And I think if someone does get injured, like, you know, as bad as it is to say, like everyone's kind of replaceable, we can all be replaced. So, you know, if Eagles injured, um, and Calvin is maybe injured and not playing as well, people like Anthony are going to step up and, and kind of fill that space. And there's always going to be a top player. Um, I think I think it comes on the players individually to to take care of our, to take care of ourselves. You know, we're we're pro athletes. This is our job. I feel like we should take it seriously and uh, do what is necessary to not get injured. Maybe that even means not necessarily throwing a forehand on every single hole when it requires a forehand. You know, if if, if you are someone who is injury prone, maybe throwing the backhand shot a little bit more than you'd like to, just to make sure you don't have injuries. I think I talked to Connor um, O'Reilly in the past. And I think he's kind of shifted his game that way to to kind of hopefully. Um, improve his longevity to kind of try to be more of a backhand dominant player. He used to be a forehand dominant. Bad idea. Um, and then also, I don't know, man, like in baseball, those guys rip uh, pitches all, like all day long or whatever. And, and they're, you know, they're putting a lot more power into that baseball than we put into a disc. And um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like they're still doing it. So I, 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 yeah, I look think, at Jake Wall. No, I, I mean, exactly. you're 100. I like I like the point right. of you saying that we're all replaceable to a point. Yeah. Listen, right. we don't need Paul McBeth going down. We don't need Calvin going down because those guys are not replaceable. You know what I mean? And right. and and we're seeing that. Uh, but I do like that that point because there is somebody to take your place. And and in baseball, dude, the I looked at the list this week. It was like five guys had Tommy John surgery. That's just part of it. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. always superstars going down. Um, Otani not pitching this year, same problem. So it's well, happening in all sports. It's not like got some gambling. It's not like yeah. we're it's not like we're uh like this crazy sport with injuries. Like all sports have that that aspect. Sure. Yeah. What I worry about is we don't have physical trainers. We don't have yeah. I mean, we lost Seth. That was cool. Now, yeah. now I go over to the booth and I'm, I'm moving these bands. I'm open to remember. I'm doing like a jump rope with something. That's not a jump rope. I'm like, I'm just massaging myself. You know, I don't know what's going on over there. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, but I mean, that's, that's nice. Is that, is that something that they, that maybe they could think about doing like a little recovery with like a little ice bath sauna stuff afterwards, maybe massage, hey, you know, afterwards, get, massage, get all the work nice, done. Get a couple Asian ladies or, out there walking on our backs, yeah. <laughs> I, I also, I also worry about like how much it costs to do all that stuff, to really take care of your body right. is an expensive endeavor. It really is. If you want to have good, point. good food if you want to have the massages, if you want to have, um, the gym and, and physical trainers, yeah. your health guidance, all that stuff, you can do it yourself, but really you want to save your time and you want to be practicing. So it's an expensive kind of feat to, to have. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you know, obviously these other sports are a lot more advanced than we are on those millions of dollars being thrown around. So it's a little bit easier for them to have, physical trainers and people, you know, kind of like watching every little thing and making sure people are staying healthy and, and not, you know, prone, prone to injury. Um, which we don't have in this golf that I might just be part of the growing pains. You know, we don't all have the, the big enough contracts to, to have a whole team to help us out um, with that. So I think it's something that would probably get better as far as the immediate answer. I don't know. Also, I just, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how much everyone practices. Cause I, I, I also don't think, People should be getting injured if we're just going out and playing around today. It's like the, I, I don't think we throw enough shots to to put our body in in, in risk like that. Which obviously I guess is wrong because people are all getting injured. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe just go to the gym. Like I said, I don't know. I, you know, <laughs> get those get, get those muscles. muscles. Protect the joints. Yeah, get those it's muscles. It's like a little shield around every little joint. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. I don't know. You get that uh, that low T too. I was having those low T problems. Now, now I'm good to go. Um, oh. uh, before we let you go here, Ezra, we normally let you know you know let people like shout out like stuff that's coming, sponsors, whatever. Uh, are you going to announce? I know you kind of told me this off podcast, but like, are you going to announce your sports card channel on Tour Life tonight? 
Wow, you're just gonna you're just gonna blow it like that, like I don't even give me a chance. Yeah, so um, it's gonna be called easy. It's gonna be called easy rips because we're gonna be ripping packs all day long. I'm gonna be going live at 2 p.m. Central every single day for five hours straight, and we're gonna be ripping packs. So hopefully we can have you on, Brody. It should be a lot of fun. I don't. The call, I don't get the call thing. I'm sorry. Uh... Me and you, we love easy, them. Uh, we hey, love them. Easy, easy rips is a great like is a great name. Easy rips, baby. Let's see if I have any of your cards, actually, right now. Um, but go ahead, go ahead and uh, shout out stuff that actually is actually happening right now. Oh, um, I don't know if a whole lot's happening. I mean, I'm I'm kind of trying to grind and keep my keep my routine the same and hopefully get that. Oh, like sponsors and stuff, this. Ezra. Where, yeah, I, don't, where, I, don't where you... I don't think I have anything crazy like going on with that either. Um, Your tour series yeah, disc, for... Ezra. Tour series disc. Follow me on YouTube. Check me out on my does, Instagram page. Does this does this guy have a gun in your head right now? <laughs> oh, hey, look at this. There we go. Set, dude. Yeah, see, you got some I sick I can sell that for like 20 bucks. You got some That's sick... Awesome. I think it'd sell for more than 20. Um, you got um, some... But no, thanks, thanks. Thanks to thanks to my sponsor, Stitchcraft Squad OTB. Um, I mean, obviously, without without having sponsors, this it's not really possible to even have this dream job. So thank you to them, and then also thanks to everyone who's cheering me on and rooting for me these last couple of events. Um, yeah, it means a lot to see people out there, and it's always it brings the excitement and to see the positive comments and the YouTube videos and the Instagram comments. Um, yeah, it means a lot. It keeps me pushed, keeps me going. So thanks everyone fan, for that. Thanks, thanks to you guys for having me on. Yeah, fan favorite Ezra right here. Oh wow! Thanks, man. Ezra Robinson's in here too. <laughs> one one of the best players on tour. Dot dot dot. That hasn't won yet. That's all right. You know, That's losing the point of winning, so I'm, I'm trending in the right direction. Will that change this? Hey, maybe you're saving it up for one of the big ones. I have played well in majors in the past, so yeah. A A B did. This week. We got we got music city this weekend. A B did. A B did say though that he wants to win European Open more than anything. And that is a major that you've done well at in the past. I did, so. I did, see, I did actually, I was tuned in, I actually saw him say that. And uh, it'd be awesome to have a battle with Anthony at European Open this next year. Is he your rival? Um, <laughs> I don't think I have any rivals yet at this point. I'm trying, I mean, he, he, he picked Gannon. I saw, I saw him pick Gannon for his rival. I feel like that makes a lot of sense. So once once I start getting some more wins, once I start getting some wins, then then I think that can be more of a conversation. Right, but right. It's fun battling him now, man. He's he is he's tough to beat, you know. But he's one of my buddies, so it's like I I'm happy to see him succeed. But at the same time, it's like kind of want to punch him in the face. Yeah, you kind of want to punch him in the face. Yeah, such a punch in the face. You know, it's like it's crazy. Right in the face. <laughs> I was I was waiting I was waiting to, to see you know the lead color coming in at the end of this last tournament. Two times I was past guy sideways with and then he's like walking over. And then when he sees me, he has like this little smoke on his face. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like I'm gonna be like oh my gosh, I want to beat this guy. But now he's able to get a and take gas and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Say, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Did he say anything like, "Hey man, nice shot on a uh, nice shot on hole 15 or whatever"? <laughs> nice shot on hole 14. I, I, don't, I doubt he was watching. I doubt he was watching. He did say that. Gannon might be. Gannon's watching coverage as he's playing. We all yeah, know that. that um, he, he doesn't miss That's anything. True. All right. Well, we'll let you go. Thanks so much for jumping on. I know you were supposed to come on earlier, so we appreciate you being flexible and coming on at the end. Uh, I think people really enjoyed that. And uh, good luck this yeah, week. Thanks for, Little Nashville. Thank uh, thanks, for, you know, thanks, for, thanks for being uh, patient with the, with the, the timing of that. No, oh, you're all good. Uh, we'll see. I'll see you in a couple, mm, six days, seven days, something like that. Heck yeah. Hey, Rick collect, Brody, baby. Hey, collect sports cards, man. Back. Collect sports cards. They're cool. They're cool. My signal is going out. My signal's going out right now. I can't. Easy rips <laughs> is in the house. Easy All right, rips. take it easy, man. Have a good night. All right, see you guys. Thanks again. All right, uh, Yuli, let's fly through these last couple. Try to get this thing under three hours for the people here. Uh, gambling and disc golf. The Disc Golf Pro Tour just announced that they're going to be having a partnership with the U.S. Integrity, which is a weird name, if you ask me, uh, to begin the process of launching professional disc golf into the world of regulated sports wagering. Disc golf, gambling, yay, nay. Yay. Yay. Uh, listener question here. I did not write their name and I apologize, but this was someone on Twitter. I thought this was a good question. 
Uh, let's have Yuli and Silas. I want both of you guys to answer this. Actually. I want to hear both of your opinions. Who will have more wins this season? Anthony Barella or Kristen Tatar? Tatar. Silas? Yeah, I'm saying Kristen because there's less competition in the field, I feel like. Good point. Wild story of the week. I feel like also, also, if sports gambling was happening right there, I would just bet so much money on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Is throw it all down. It was, it, was, it, was, so much. it was like the same odds. Yeah, just everything on the house. Um, wild story of the week comes from uh oh anonymous. These are normally good ones. MA2 Louisiana State Championships. Have you ever played in the Louisiana State Championships? I got I lucky so. and had my buddy on my card. We come up to a downhill par three about 300 feet. There's a circular bag just in front of the green that you had to challenge or bog, not bag, circular bog, just in front of the green that you had to challenge if you're going for the pin. My buddy's disc lands on the edge of the bog, halfway in and out of the water. We all took a look and agreed it was in bounds. Another disc golfer from a different card was walking by on adjacent fairway and kind of slowed to watch what was going on. He quickly realized there was something controversial going on while we stood around the disc. He runs up and presses the disc down and water comes up above the disc he looks up and says it's out it's surrounded by water we were so astounded all we could do is sort of laugh and just shake our heads once the loser walked off we continued to play as agreed oh that okay i mean it's not a crazy story but it is i, I would say it is kind of a it's a bold move to not even be on the card and like come into the, the card and tell them what is going on that yeah like that shouldn't be allowed no it i feel like, but happy yeah i mean i feel like if someone's walking over and starts talking I'm like dude get out of here you're not on this card that's, that's probably yeah. how that's, that's probably how i respond to that what, what are you doing um this week 2024 tour series disc guys make sure you go over check out this crafts website yuli's got a bunch of stuff on there i've got a bunch of stuff on there uh foundation we have the april sub box going out. I was just told to, there's a very collectible disc in some of the boxes this month. So if you want to check that oh. out, go to foundationdisc.com. Also, we are now in the new location. Um, the grand reopening of foundation disc golf in Lynchburg has been completed. Everyone, the podcast, everything is now moved over there. Silas is over there. has got everything set up now. So uh, hopefully that all goes well. And when worlds comes around, I hope you guys uh, look how much, look how much room is behind Silas. It's so spacious. There's so much room to do activities there. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can stop by. Oh, the question was from Chris, uh, Chris, Meadows was the question. Sorry, I just I just caught that. Uh, Tour Life crew, we got a couple of new members tonight. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. And uh, Tour Life merch update size. What do we got? What are we looking at? All right. So for Grip Locked, we've got 264. Ooh, they're getting close to 300. They're, they're, okay. Yeah, they're, get, they're getting close to 300. And for Tour Life, we've got 326. Ooh, that 350 right around the corner. Go Solid. pick up. Go pick up some sweet tour life merch, folks. We got a bunch of it. Foundationdisc.com. Uh, search tour life. A lot of cool stuff over there. Go pick you up some. Uh, Yuli, Silas, did we miss anything? Anything else you guys want to chat about? This was a long one. It was appreciate, a long one. Appreciate you guys good, hanging though. out with us. Yeah, a couple a couple of difficulties here and there, but we you know we worked it out. We threw some audibles. We we got to the finish line there at the end. But uh, yeah, thanks to all our guests, Calvin. A B Ezra Ben, uh, absolutely awesome episode. Really cool to talk to all those guys and uh, yeah. excited to see what goes down this week in Nashville. Yuli, if you play, good luck. If you don't, you know, maybe enjoy a round of golf or something up there. They've got some nice golf courses in Nashville. Yeah, uh, exactly. Appreciate it, Brody. All right, everyone. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. <laughs>